All right, all right. Welcome back to Cops One Donut. I am your host, Eric Levine, and today my all-star cast is the one and only Eric Tanzi from Failure to Stop Podcast. How are you doing, Eric? Good, sir. All right. Wonderful. And then the ever-empowering uh, Dominic Izzo. If you don't know him, he's the... Uh, I'll let you give your tagline, Dominic. I get it wrong every time. I don't know, man. What, I, what am I today? I'm today I'm uh, the, 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 the hated, disgruntled ex-cop who... Effing can't you know can't, doesn't like doesn't yeah. like his own people. Yeah, right. That's how I am today. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm a blue falcon. That's what I am. Oh, they, that's uh, a military blue. term. I haven't heard oh, blue falcon, falcon in a minute. Yeah. Blue falcon. Yeah. Yeah, blue falcon. Mm. Yeah. Do you See, know I'm, where that originated from? I don't know. Okay, so it actually, from my understanding, it originated from my career field in the Air Force, uh, security forces, because on our beret is a falcon. <laughs> And it's blue, <laughs> so we are the the military snitches, and uh, that's why they call me in blue falcons. It makes so much sense. Yeah, so that's what I was told. So I don't know how true that is, but um, it sounds good though. I mean, it sounds like a it, it makes sense. Legit. Yeah, legit. Uh, logically, that that timeline tracks. So because um, I mean, it's one thing to be a cop, right? Nobody likes you, or not very many people like you. But then be a military cop, no. Nobody likes you. Yeah. Dude. Nobody likes you. Uh, Ryan. Not even your own people. Who's this Ryan Alicio who's like, Izzo? And I'm like, Don't so do um, no, we no. we talked about you on our last live, Izzo. And yeah. uh we have we have Tansy's YouTube following on here with us. Hey um, peeps. So that's something that you're able to do. I just know in your old age you haven't quite figured out how to link I your did people. It. I did it <laughs> once, but the problem is I jumped on here uh, um last minute so i didn't you know what's crazy is there are two ryan alosios in our fan group and they both play hockey hell yeah one lives in north carolina and then this ryan lives in i think st louis maybe i I grew up playing Um, hockey baby center he's a big he's a big uh uh, a big hockey guy Hmm. very cool um all right so let me kind of get into this um today we're gonna we're gonna discuss some topics before we get into our videos but I kind of want to tell people what it is we do. So um, what we do that's a little different than anybody that watches other police videos is we pretend as though we are the officers in the body cam video that we've never watched. We don't know what the video is going to be. And then we kind of give you insight as the call develops how we would handle it as a cop. Izzo, uh, Eric, and me, we've got, you know, together at least 100 years of um, police experience combined because Izzo's got 85 of those. And then uh, between that, we will we'll, we may all have different little paths we take, but you'll see that typically the end goal is the, always the same result. Um, so it, it's kind of fun. But the point is, is for you guys in the audience to give us your take as well. We want you to participate. That is the fun part about this. You know, if you've got questions, ask the questions. We will give our opinions. And more often times than not, at least one of us will disagree and we'll go down that rabbit hole and you'll just see how different law enforcement can be. The last time we had Izzo on, I think one of the things that we disagreed on was the attitude check when you do a, a traffic stop. And Izzo had some great points that I hadn't even considered. So, um, and, and we're, let's face it, I don't know a single cop that can't say they weren't guilty of it. I can tell you right now that I, it's happened to me. I let my emotions get the best of me and I'm like, fuck it, he's getting a ticket. And that's wrong. I don't think that's the right way to go about it. Uh, and Izzo changed my mind even more on that fact. So, oh but, wow, that's a compliment. Yeah. Holy shit! Thank you. Well, I'm a, I'm, dude, I'm a, I'm very objective. I've tried to be my whole life. I want to, if somebody has a better take, and I can't step out of my own way and say like, oh fuck, that actually makes more sense than the way I was thinking. Doesn't mean I was wrong. I just hadn't heard the right perspective yet. I, 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 I deliver thing and people don't understand this about me they can't stand my delivery it's what it is i come across extremely asshole-ish arrogant (laughs) people don't get what what i do whenever i every every post i do it's not for anybody i don't care who follows me every post it doesn't matter what the context is if it's law enforcement network marketing martial arts you name it i do it to hold myself accountable right so if i put something up there talking about uh whatever standard I put that up there to where, dude, you just put that out in public. 
you now you're accountable for that. So yeah. when I do, I can't, I, it's like external processing. When I, I go off on a, an attitude thing, um, it's not to be like, I know what I'm talking about. It's do you know what I'm, you're talking about? You better be convicted in this. And if I get challenged of it, you better have an answer for it. So I guess for lack of a better uh, description about how I handle things is I put stuff out there almost like a diary so I could reflect back to it and said, shit, you said that. Because I do go back to my stuff. Like I've, I've gone back and forth um, with social issues in law enforcement and everything else over the years where one of the, one of the videos that got me viral in 2014 was where I talked about, you know, shut your mouth on a traffic stop, meaning that the citizen and just comply. And, and it got all the way up to like, uh, uh, what's his name? Dr. Drew and um, who was the other one who was with him on Loveline? I can't remember. Whatever he was talking about in his shit. It Nancy was before, Grace. Uh, it was before um, uh, <clears throat> Corolla. Before we got really censored on social media, I was getting 500,000 to a million views on my content. And that fed my ego like crazy. And I'm like, dude, you better be able to back up what you're saying. So I like that because it was, all right, man, you're saying this shit. You better be accountable for it. So I don't do it for anybody. I, it definitely is an inner narcissism thing. Why, why I uh, deliver shit the way I deliver. But it, in, in that, I want to point out that I've been putting out content now for three years in April. This is my third year anniversary, by the way, guys. So um, I'm very happy that it's still going. Uh, something that I've noticed too, is that it, people are going to jump on you for being a hypocrite. And I don't think that you being a hypocrite. I think that information has changed for you over time. Your perspectives change. The way you look at things change. It doesn't make you a hypocrite. It doesn't make you a flip-flopper or any of those target words you want to hear. It just makes you a person that's able to change his mind as information gets up to date. So I, I, I hate that we attack each other online for stuff like that when it's so easy just to say, yeah, that was the way I thought then. But shit well, you know, what's also crazy is sometimes you say things um, and you know <laughs> in your head the context of what you're saying, but you can't articulate the context to the public yes. as you're saying it. So, like, for example, Tim Kennedy, when he said when he uh, it was years ago, but he was talking about we need like reasonable gun changes. Well, like, you know, there was a huge thought process in his head of what reasonable gun changes were. But all that came out were reasonable gun changes, and he got canceled by the right wing. He was like one of the first right wingers to ever get canceled because he said reason. And if anybody knows Tim Kennedy or has anybody's followed him long enough, you know, like you kind of know what he means by that. Yeah, you know, he's not like anti two A by any means. I mean, it's Tim fucking Kennedy. I, the dude is, you know, damn near libertarian, I guess. But you know, when he said it, he got canceled by the right wing, and I and I think when he said it. I bet you there was a lot more context in his brain. Actually, I know there was like, because yeah. then he came back out later and explained his words. But in that one quick interview, all that came out was reasonable gun changes or gun law changes. And, um, uh, people, yeah, fucking mind well, over. before we get too far off the rails here, first, I want to get the formalities out of the way. Um, I have two sponsors that I'm going to mention tonight, guys. Uh, the first being, um, ghost patch. Okay. So I've got them up on the screen right now. Um, here is their website, uh, and I am actually going to share the exact website right here, right now on the screen. It is ghostpatchcustom.com. Uh, the thing that we're talking about right now with Ghost Patch, so this is for military first responders. We collect patches. We're into that shit. Um, Ghost Patch creates this new thing called a Flex Patch, and it's if you've ever seen my patches, I'm holding it up to the screen right now. Uh, it looks kind of metallic. Matter of fact, it looks metal. It, but it's, it's super bendy and flexy. Um, it's a kind of all-weather thing. So if you're in an official capacity as law enforcement, you can get your badge recreated, um, and they'll do that. Um, and it's kind of cool. And mine is the, actually the older version, and I've had this for well over, I think, a year now. And it's got no wear and tear on it. But they got a newer version um, that's supposed to be better, the 2.0. So check out Ghost Patch. Go to their thing. The cool part about Ghost Patch is their turnover time. Um, most places are taking about 16 weeks to get you your department patches. Ghost Week is flexing that they've got four-week turnover. So it's fairly quick. One month, you'll get your shit. Uh, so make sure you guys check them out. Tell them Two Cops, One Donut sent you. Shout out to uh, Ghost Patch. And my other sponsor uh, is Peregrine. So let me share this screen with you guys. 
So looking at their website, I'll fully admit, if you're not a law enforcement nerd, it's kind of hard to follow. All right. Um, so let me just give you a quick example. I just put an ad out there. I've got their site up here on the thing too, peregrine.io, P-E-R-G-R-I-N-E.io. Um, let me give you the, the the street cop version of what they do. Basically, it can take any uh, modus operandi, if you will. Uh, if you got a copper theft person, it's able to match up and show you all the copper theft people in your investigation. It'll tell you the other detectives are also working similar MOs. It can pull your body cam footage and show you suspect names that have been involved with copper thefts. You don't have to do any of that work. So just check out Peregrine. I promise the rabbit hole goes way deeper than that. I just don't want to kill you guys with a bunch of uh, jargon over this. Go check them out. Tell them Eric Levine from Two Cops, One Donut sent you. You get hooked up. Um, but more importantly, you are going to help law enforcement. And that's my honest opinion on this product. They could not... They were not a sponsor. They weren't even on, on the realm of possibility. They heard about me talking about them on the show, and they reached out to me. So I was already a fan before they were anything. This is going to change police work, just like DNA evidence did, fingerprinting, and license plate readers. That's my best pitch I can give you about why I think they're they're badass. So go to Peregrine. Check them out. Um, I promise, have a conversation. It will get you a lot farther than just checking out the website. But... Check out the website, too. Maybe you're a tech nerd and you're into it. So uh, that's what I got for them. All right. Sponsorship stuff is out of the way. Uh, let me close this. Let's get back to chit-chatting here. Um, get that off the screen. All right, boys. All right. So the first thing we're going to talk about, all right, we're going to talk about dogs in police work and sending them into dangerous situations. Specifically, what I'm talking about is canine Enzo from Las Vegas PD. I put up a video the other day um, trying to just honor the dog and show people an update that this dog went in. He got stabbed several times, went through the ringer. Uh, the officers on scene did everything they could um, and saved the dog. And mm -hmm. uh, the dog was going to be fine, could go back to service as far as I know. Um, and that was their latest update. I do think they're going to retire the dog because he just was up there in age anyway. Um, but he was fit for duty. So very cool. I'm going to pull up the, let me see here. Give me one second. Um, look at, there it is. And I will share this screen. Da, 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 you ever da. see when the, when the canines get the titanium, uh, canine teeth? Teeth. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's so awesome. like, All, right. Damn! All right. So I'm going to pull this up here. Um, I'm not going to play the video. I just don't, you know, there's no need to watch a dog get stabbed. I already told you what happened. So basically here's the backstory. This man is armed with a knife. Um, I believe he was wanted for homicide. He had lit the apartment behind him on fire and uh SWAT was just getting to the scene. So they let the dog go as a less lethal option to try to go in there. Now the, do the, the person was known to be armed with a knife. They saw the knife. And they still release the dog. So that's where the debate kind of came in. So what I'm looking for from you guys is what is your opinion on a known armed subject versus a non-armed subject and when and when we should not release a canine? I'll let you go well, first. I think my, my first question would be like how exigent was it? Because there's no video. So can you, can you right. tell me again? So, like so, um, he had lit the apartment that he was in behind him on fire. So that okay. was one exigent circumstance. Are there Those people buildings, in the apartment? They don't know. So that's an okay. unknown. Well, there you go. I mean, you've got to yeah. get rid of him because you have right. bigger fish to fry. The dog's a tool. Um, you know, I, I'm not choosing a dog's life over anybody else's life. If that's the quickest way to get this guy down. <sighs> I mean, I don't know. Can you articulate that lighting an apartment on fire full of people is deadly force worthy? I mean, I don't know. I mean, obviously, you got to attend that fire. So, you know, maybe you just put this guy down. But I get it. Today's society and culture says that that looks bad. Um, I mean, yeah. it, it, you know, the dog's a tool. And if, if that's if that's where your mindset is and that's where it has to be as a canine handler, because that's the facts, then let yeah. it rip, baby, I guess. Yeah, and uh, Izzo, what do you think, man? I'll shock the hell out of you by saying I'm not trained in the canine, so it's really difficult for me to form an opinion because I don't know if they have the ability to separate. It's a, it's a, it, I know it's a tool. 
but man, it's a dog, right? And, and I wanted the canine bad for our department. I obviously didn't get it. Um, I don't. What level of force is the canine uh, compared to? It's well. It's you, a less how about lethal. this? You cannot shoot. This is this is crazy. I think we have to preface this. You cannot shoot somebody for stabbing your canine. You can't do it. You cannot do it. The courts have already ruled on it. Uh, it is a tool. Like whether you like it or not, PETA is actually trying to fight that. Yeah. <laughs> PETA is like that's not fair, which is you know weird to say that PETA is fighting on something I agree with. Uh, but um, you cannot shoot somebody for stabbing a canine. It's not a person. It's not a human. So if somebody comes to your house and tries to kill your dog, you can't kill them, which is bizarre. I didn't know that until I started studying canine cases. But that's a really important fact to know. That, but here, this is where I would say articulation is everything. The fire, the fire for me would be like, well, if he's letting his thing on, if he's let this apartment on fire, we have people that we need to evacuate, and you got to start moving on this guy. And if he wants to move towards you with a knife, then you put him down and you go deal with this fire because that's a, you know, you burn my children alive in an apartment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and all you did was let a dog go. I would be pretty. It blows me away how you can't use uh, deadly force when somebody's stabbing your dog to death, but people can get prosecuted. It's like, it used to be, I don't know if it's changed in Illinois. I thought I heard the law change where years ago, a pet was property, but then <laughs> they've got all of a sudden now you could be criminally prosecuted. If you, you know, neglect your dog and, and kill your, what's well, property. Why, why is it, why is it, why is it treated as a, a harsh life? So that sucks, dude. I didn't know. About you know, that. I took a, I took a case as a rookie and um, I, I really didn't like how the training officer that I was with for the night handled the situation, but a person was trying to kill his own dog by giving it uh, sedatives. And these folks, which were wealthier people, and uh, they hired their babysitter to come over and take the kids upstairs while they gave this dog Ambien uh, mm. to to kill it. Well, the babysitter being like 15 or 14 calls 911. And my training officer was like pushing in the door and he was like, we don't need a warrant. And I'm like, dude, it's a fucking dog. Like, what are you doing? He ends up breaking this dude's face. He pried in the door, punches this guy in the face um, all for a, a citation at the end of the night. Like, I thought this was like very excessive. It was one of the very few times that I was very uncomfortable with the person. And he was a substitute trainer for me. Um, and I, I vowed to never work around or near that guy again. I just thought the whole thing was absurd because I feel like <laughs> I'm not paying a vet $500 to put my dog down. I will always do it myself. My family has put our dogs down. Every single dog that we've ever owned, we have put them all down ourselves. Um, and it, and it was in the same manner, right? Everybody gathers around, you know, except daddy went outside and and shot it. Um, uh, and, and that was, you know, I remember weeping and wailing as like a 10 year old when he shot my boxer, but it, he had to go, you know, he got hit by a car, his back legs were crushed, you know, but, uh, you know, so I thought it was very odd that we, we ended up charging this guy and gave him a ticket. So you, you have to pay a government veterinarian, if you will, to put your dog down. Like, you don't even have the freedom to kill your own fucking Everything, dog. Everything's a, everything's a racket. Everything in I, business. I'm know? curious though. There's got to, I'm, and I could be wrong. I don't, I'm going to be totally honest. I don't know the law on this, but I thought that a police canine was treated just as though it was another officer mm -mm. and counts like when you get charged in court, it's like you assaulted a peace officer. I don't know like what assault on a dog is, but I know for a fact that you cannot shoot a dog that is being stabbed. As a law enforcement officer, the courts have already ruled on it. I had a big case breakdown out of Jacksonville, Florida, where the SWAT team shoots a dude, lays him down. Now, they're able to articulate that the dude's eyes were on the SWAT team as they were approaching um, and not on the dog. And that's why they shot him. Good for them. I hope it works out for them. I really do. But I had uh, a big canine specialist that was a Marine Corps dog handler. And then he's been a 26-year dog handler uh, in the police department. And he's now like one of the head dog trainers in the state. And he blew me away with that. He was like, you cannot, the courts have already ruled, you cannot shoot a dog, a police dog, if it's uh, if, huh. if it's being stabbed or shot or anything. No, 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 not shoot a police dog. I'm talking shoot the guy stabbing the dog. Yeah, I'm saying you cannot shoot the guy stabbing that, the dog. That's not what you said, though. You said you can't oh. shoot the dog. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, no, not shoot oh. a police dog. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, we were just talking about saying stuff that's in your head and it doesn't come out the right way. 
<laughs> yeah. Especially when you made me drink alcohol tonight. I haven't drank alcohol you. in a very long time. Yeah. You were like, you gave me a look. You were like, ah, oh, you pussy. I said, well, you can either, you know, have an adult beverage or be a bitch, whatever you want to do. It's up to you. You're an adult. I'm going to let you make that decision. So Tom Smith, what's up? We got a little VIP in the guest uh, list there. Also, Banning Sweatland is in the house. He's out actually on duty right now. So um, is he? I'll be he, safe, Banning. Yeah, yeah. So he 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 chimed in a little bit. Um, otherwise, he would have been here. I know he's going to be mad at me that I brought up a canine subject and he wasn't on the show for it. Next time he's on, have him bring it up and give us <laughs> Yeah, because he's got this huge gnarly scar like up on his arm here from when he was a canine handler, and the dog fucking ripped open his arm. So uh, he's a big dude. Like if you've never met Banning in person, he is a he's a specimen of a fucking deputy. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like the country boy that you know when you shake his hand, you're like, not fucking with that dude, not at all. <laughs> he's just farm strong. That's the best way I could put it. Um, Tom Smith is from, uh, from I think it's called Gold Shields. I don't want to mess it up. Um, NYPD-based podcast. Uh, he's a retired NYPD and uh, got some good stuff going on out there. Uh, let me see. What else we got? So, um, so yeah, so my understanding, I just want to put my understanding of how this works with the dogs is, in my opinion, for what we see in that video, when this guy's standing there with a knife, I wouldn't have released my dog. I wouldn't have let him go because I have a known arm subject. I'm not going to send that dog into harm's way when there's other options. Because basically what they did is the dog got stabbed, and then the SWAT team moved in with a shield and pinned the dude. Am I the only asshole who thinks like the reality of the situation where you, you've got the one guy who worked six months on the road and then got in a foot pursuit, ran, tripped, broke his collarbone, and then they stuck him in investigations and he never went back on the street again. Yes, I'm speaking about somebody from my department. And that guy <laughs> loved, loved to fucking ding his coworkers on anything. So he's now lieutenant and he looks and he does, you know, the the, the debriefing later on, looks at the officer and goes, um, it's Officer Levine. You saw the subject had a knife, correct? Correct. Um, is there any reason why you chose to put department property at risk by releasing the canine? You know that asshole exists. Oh, for sure. That asshole exists. Yeah. In and, every yeah. fucking department. And, and when you watch <laughs> the video, the thing is, is there's no other thing pressing except for that unknown fire. You know what I mean? They knew that. Yeah, I mean, but like for me, having like five kids and somebody's putting their house on fire, uh, especially in Las Vegas, when you had a police officer light his whole fucking house on fire. And then killed his like killed his yeah. wife and killed his kid. Lit his house on fire. And this was like this yeah. was like months ago, right? It I, wasn't that long ago, or at least I just I became no, aware of this case. It it, it, it circulated around again because I had never oh, heard okay. of it either. But it yeah. actually happened in like 2015 or 13. Oh, really? Yeah. So oh, okay. it's it's oh, okay. old. It's I didn't know me. that, but it was new to me. And I was like, shit, people got to understand what these dispatchers got to go through Ooh, on yeah, these calls. Imagine hearing that. You know, there's there is quite an argument that people want to make that dispatchers are not first responders. Listen, oh, they dude, are first responders, hundred percent. They're first. They're, responders. They can't do their job without dispatchers. They're, they're exactly. Not, it's impossible. And if you're a cunt to a dispatcher, like if I, like if no, my rookie, they say the word, my man. <laughs> it's subliminal. What? It was it's my subliminal. Favorite word. Good job. Oh, it's my favorite. It's my favorite word too. I'm so sorry. Can't I thought you were getting mad at me. No, yeah. can't. Uh, it stands for yeah. can't understand normal, normal thinking. Normal thinking, yeah. Totally. Thank you. Dude, we're yeah. simpatico. Bro. Look at this. Bro. Right. Yeah. That's why right. I got my favorite together. word. Uh, yeah. I, so, for, yeah, that case was crazy. Um, I, I absolutely think that uh, the traumas 911 dispatchers go through make them first responders. Um, and, and they hear the traumas like every day. And one thing that a dispatcher told me um, on one of my podcasts that I never even thought of was that, like, for you as a cop, the drama is over because you have closure. Mm. He's like, dude, we, we hang up the phone when you get there. We don't know if that person lived, died. We don't know if somebody got arrested, didn't get arrested. We don't know if y'all transported, didn't transport. We know nothing. After you get there and we hang up, we're out of it. So we never have closure to any of these cases. Um, whereas like you guys kind of get a little bit of closure, you know, getting to, to see it. All we do is manifest what that scene must have looked like in our brains. And I was like, wow, that's pretty... You know, it's pretty intense. Mm. Yeah. Um, somebody asked a question. I, just, I like to address any questions people throw out there. So Davey said, um, I am currently 
at my brother's house in Washington State are the stress of hostage negotiations comparable to getting your infant nephew to stop crying by constantly moving. Mm. Uh, I I have zero experience as a hostage negotiator. I have I was first on scene and some shit was going down. I try to talk him out of it real quick, but that's about as far as my experience goes. You guys got anything on that? No, I uh, pull out, so I never knew how to do that kind of stuff. I'm sorry. If I you will die alone. Them. I say all the time I'm going to die alone in the pool of my own urine on my big lazy boy. And hopefully the strippers that I hire to come over and check on me will find me and call the proper authorities. Well, you'll be well dressed when you go out. Oh, so that's nice. Absolutely. Uh, Davey, if you shake him, if you shake your infant nephew, it gets quieter. Did you yeah. hear that, that shaken baby syndrome the, for that people have been charged for years is bullshit? And like, you what? Really, they have said that you can't. Uh, this came out like <laughs> this came out at the same time where um, positional affix asphyxiation. Do you remember, were you guys? I, like, I, I remember like, that the hog tie. Right. So the, 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 it came out as being debunked and positional affix asphyxiation was debunked because they had said that the man. I'm paraphrasing. This was in the use of force instructor class I got. The guy who came up with the study was paid all this fucking money, and he took four cases, four, and based out of like the thousand cases he had on his findings on four, nobody ever questioned him. So they said that's what positional asphyxiation was based on the four cases. So they say the same thing with a shaken baby. They said it's almost impossible to, uh, I'm sure you could fucking snap a kid's neck like that, but uh, shake a baby to death like that. Yeah, I, I just... Yeah, but can you shake him retarded? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I'd be... Uh, yeah, if somebody needs to shake me unretarded would be great. No, I think that's... I think like I just want to put out control. there, like, I always have to do when Izzo's on the show. Now, apparently, I have to do it with Tansy Swimmer. on the show. Is that the, the, the views and beliefs and words that are said from these two assholes are not necessarily that of two cops when done. What, what did I say? We say, say what you want. We say what people want to say. Shake them, shake them mentally ill? They, yeah. they, you can't. It's like you, you shake them... Anyway, um, retarded is a valid word. It's a it's a slowing of progression, a halting. Yeah, of progression. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that was offensive. That. It honestly, it's just um, it, I thought it was yeah. only offensive when you said it's like a Down syndrome or a uh, yeah because they're down. They have Down syndrome. They're not retarded. Yeah, you can't call them that. You know what I mean? But like you're like wrongfully identifying retarded them. is. <laughs> and this is the part of the show where I sit uncomfortable because I'm still hired as a police officer and you yeah. two are retired. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, how many words are we going to give society? This is crazy. Yeah, hey, you say whatever you want. You're a big boy. Two, I'm not controlling words. Take them all back. Take I can't all keep back. up with what we're not saying these days. I know, right? <laughs> um, all I'm saying is uh, I shake my babies, um, but they laugh when I do it. And it makes how do you shake them? Every time. So you just, you just. Like like a gentle shaking, and you do like a oh, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. and they laugh yeah. and they giggle and they think it's funny as shit. So I think I think your demonstration is funnier than than what you do to your <laughs> nephews. <laughs> I didn't know you were going skiing, but you do what you got to do, buddy. <laughs> it's a glory hole. Yeah, he's uh, big into the shake weight. It's got that thermal <laughs> cooling uh, liquid that comes out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Okay, where the fuck were we? What were we talking about? We were talking about oh dispatchers and and and, 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 and all that. Okay, so um oh, and it's Dispatcher Awareness Week, by the way. Correct. Yeah, which I thought was in June because I got the whole gay month and Dispatcher Month confused. Oh, you know, I'm a dispatcher. I found out the dispatchers get as much hate as cops do. Where <laughs> somebody was doing one of those um, the Instagram things, like uh, yeah. I'm I'm a whatever, and then they. They, they walk as the camera. It's a new trend. You say something like, oh, yeah, I drink coffee. Of course I'm going to, you know, yeah, make yeah, it. Yeah. So it was dispatchers and it was, well, you got a three dispatchers. Thing. I'm a dispatcher. Of yeah. course I'm cold all the time and this and that kind of stuff. And because I have a massive appreciation for them, I put a comment. I said, you're dispatchers. Of course you're going to be unappreciated, unrecognized, blah, 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 blah. And basically cops can't uh, do the job without you. Because literally if I'm screaming for help and there's no dispatcher, you don't know where the fuck I am. The amount of people that were clearly either cops or, or, or cop supporters who just, dude, they're not going to fuck you. Dude, they're just stop giving them all this. <laughs> I'm like, you, you, cops are the most miserable human beings on the planet. They can't have <laughs> anybody getting acknowledged unless nope. it's themselves. Nope. It blows me away. Fucking blows me away. Bro, you nope. know what though? I almost on that that thing, like I I didn't because I respect dispatchers and 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 whatnot. But like you had to find all three of them had to be extremely overweight because like all the comments were like, I'm a dispatcher, of course I'm fat as shit. And I was like, God damn it. Like <laughs> I don't know. I was like, oh dude, you like they found the three biggest girls. 
and the one biggest dude to do oh, that. That's fucked up. I know. Up. I felt bad. I felt bad. I didn't up. say it. I didn't say it. I didn't say you said it. it. I'm saying that's fucked up. Um, it uh, is fucked up. What's but, cool? But like, also at the same time, like you got to know before you put some on social media, like especially if you're putting it on from a department, that you already have to be aware that you're going to get roasted. I mean, my son. Yeah. Just it was just like the most innocent dude ever, and the only reason he has social media is because of his his you know sponsored skateboarding stuff. But he I mean he made like a very innocent like how to kickflip a seven stair. This kid's ten years old kick flipping a seven stair that's like eight feet tall, and the first comment was like, "Bro, you, why are your teeth so fucked up? I bet your parents hate fucking brushing where's, those things." <laughs> where's the forty year old in the comments going? Oh, nice kick, whatever. You couldn't do it this way with yeah. Dude, get back to me when you can. So, what the fuck? Yeah, as he's sitting there eating a bowl like, of cereal on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's my a god! Fucking ruthless place, man. The I will say, awesome. the more that the at least the podcast stuff and whatnot grows, you know, I see what Izzo and Tansy. I'm sure you guys have faced for a while now, but the trolls have it just. They, I, I get. I, I don't get on them. I'm not a. I won't censor unless you're being racist or, or you mm-hmm. know saying you're going to kill somebody. You know, I try to. Follow because Facebook will delete your shit. So all yeah. of them will. So I try to get rid of that stuff, but I don't censor. I let them stay what they're going to say. And and if the crowd wants to jump on them, they will. And I want people to know, like, hey, if you're going to troll, like, I'm not censoring you, but people are going to go after you and say shit. And you got to don't you gotta take it. it for what it is. Yeah. I, I don't pay attention no. to it. Stay um, out of the comments. Yeah. I, I tell them, hey, if you want to have a conversation, cool. Start one, but yep. if I you're made just another gonna... bad mistake, uh, I acknowledged my, that's my current war the last two days. Uh, the guy who plays Reacher, I guess he said some oh. shit. Cops get away from word murder, and he responded the FOP. FOP put out this big thing, and he actually put up a really good response to the FOP statement by saying that he w- this was his issue with law enforcement was they can't handle criticism and they lash out like this and blah, blah blah i put a comment up saying you know hey retired cop here there is an ego problem in law enforcement blah blah, blah this snack cops can't handle being criticized dude i made the mistake of reading the comments oh, oh no. you're that guy who got fired oh you were never a real cop and oh it's like holy shit what did did so you can't ever say you know law enforcement we could do a little bit better Right. Because then all of a sudden you're going to get the, the the shit dicks out there who are still on yeah. patrol, hating their fucking lives with oh. their extra lives out there, saying you're, you know, whatever. Now, Pro, see, you see, I was going to say, you've got the benefit that people know that about you, that you are going to more often than not call out bullshit than, mm-hmm. than say it's all rainbows and sunshine. Where me, I'm pretty even. I'm, I, I, I post a lot of pro. I, I'll say pro. It's not the intent. It's just when I see good police work, I want to, I want to dwell on that. I don't want to dwell necessarily on shitty stuff, but if I see something shitty, I will also call it out. But I have put myself in this corner where if I do show something where a cop is doing something bad and I call it out, well, I've got this whole crowd of cops that think that this is just a pro law enforcement echo chamber that I've created. That's not what I created. That I, yeah. If I created, if I see something that's bullshit, I'm going to call it out. And then, then your audience kind of turns on you a little bit. But hey, I'm like, yeah, you can put a hundred posts that are positive, and there's the problem. Like I, I, I spoke about this today. There, anytime you make a statement, I don't care if it's on a, a religion, an ethnic group, whatever, you'll get the people who come in and say, "Well, not all." That's the first thing. So when you make a generalization, that's the literal point of making a generalization. You are blanketing, and there's always exceptions to the rule. And somebody today said, well, not all cops this that. I said, no, you know what? And you and I were, were a little bit today, we're exchanging with this with the uh, how is it 2024, and you still have cops yeah. who do not know their constitutional authority. And at this point, with the overwhelming amount of evidence, I don't care. Some woman put out, well, it's 3% of the cops out there. That's 3% of extremely dangerous men and women out there who will ruin people's lives and they just don't get it. So collectively, it needs to be all cops that say, yeah, I'm gonna (laughs) demand better of myself today and my coworker. But the problem, I'm sure you know this as a command, is like with our department, we had um, 
it was a responsibility of police officers in our uh, general orders to uh, kind of govern one another and say, hey, Eric, you know, on this call today, this, that, blah, blah, great job, whatever. But if I criticized you, that would fall under ostracization and bullying. So it's like, which one fucking is it? So you have these cops who are, you know, if a cop in New York does something awesome, I'm in Illinois, yes, thank me for my service. I did a great job. If that same cop does something, does something stupid and steps on somebody's face and takes a shit in their mouth, well, not all cops like that. So collectively, I don't think anything is going to change until cops collectively come together and go, man, we're not tolerating this shit anymore. Because they've got command staff against them, the citizens against them, all this shit. And there has to be a massive wave of solidarity. Otherwise, you guys are all fucked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> somebody said, not trying to be a dick, uh, but probably am. Will there be any body cam breakdowns in this broadcast? Yes, yeah, there well, will. Yeah, I'll get off my soapbox. But uh, we're not there yet. Um, but Do you it. brought in the, the next segue because the next topic that I wanted to hit real quick was stop an ID, a.k.a. a little stop and talk, you know? Not necessarily yeah. stop an ID. There's a difference between those. So I'm going to show the video that Enzo, uh, Enzo, <laughs> Izzo was talking about. Uh, we were talking about the dog Enzo earlier. So, dude, go. I'm going to at least not lie. knowing what's that. No, I'm, sorry, I'm not going to lie. I, when you, earlier when I first came on, you were like, "I have Lizzo coming on." I thought you meant like Lizzo. Oh, I no, have. No. I have the ass of a 400 pound black woman. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. All right, here we go. How to handle stopping IDs. Okay. Uh, somebody called you in as a suspicious person. Okay. What are, what are we doing here? Parked. Parked in a residential neighborhood? Parked in a public street. Is there a reason why you're here? Just parked in a public street, minding my business. That's all. Do you live around here? I'm not answering any questions. Okay. Do you need any service from us, any help from us whatsoever? No, but if I do, I'll make sure I give you guys a call. Do you want to identify yourself? You need to have a crime, and they need to be under arrest for them to be forced to ID. Uh, according to law, I don't have to. No, I know. I'm asking you. Do you no. want to identify yourself? I do not. You don't? Okay. Can you identify yourself for me? Yeah, it's Officer Palka. A badge number? 394. Okay. Okay. All right? Yep. All right. Any other questions or concerns from us? No other questions. No concerns. Okay. All right. You have a good day, sir. Thank you. All, right. all too often. And that's it. He did a great job. That's You're how right. those calls go. I have Perfect. no problem with what he did because he asked. Yeah. He asked. There's no law that says you can't ask for somebody's ID. Yeah. And he didn't get emotionally invested because this guy said yeah. no. He didn't let yeah, it no. get to him. I would probably go and sit back and watch the dude for a little while just to like make sure that he's not in fact suspicious because if you leave and that dude goes and shoots the, the collar, <laughs> then you're like, fuck. Well, so yeah, I'd probably I mean, pull back a couple of blocks and just kind of like keep an eye on it for a minute. But, but there's yeah, things you like, can I think do you did prior. A great job. You can run the plate. You oh, know, yeah, yeah. you can check the plate. You can see if maybe you recognize them, anything like that, um, which brought up another freaking um, little hornet's nest. There's people like, well, you can't run their plates. They didn't do anything. You, you have to, you have you to have articulate for whatever and, you want. And that's what I was trying to say. If you're that's on a public lot. roadway, you're free game. If I can see you, if I can see your plate, I can run it. That's yeah. That's, if you draw attention to me, I'm running your plate. That was my rule. And like, that might be a whole bunch of bumper stickers that makes me draw attention. It might be <coughs> like crazy rims. It might be loud music. It might be your cars just sounds like shit. You but if, if you draw attention rims? to me, huh? You say whatever crazy? draws my attention, I'm like a fish. Okay. Right. I mean, you can use oh, a yeah, lure, just, a worm. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'm you like know, if it fish. draws my attention, I'm Wait, running you your profiling? plate. Profiling? Are you profiling? No. Get those rims. Look at all those black kids in that car over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, to be fair, I didn't. There was any. There wasn't any white people where I worked. Uh, and if I saw a white person, like I wanted to give them a ticket so I could have, like, some white guy on my racial profiling sure. forms that we had sure. to do. Also, the blue yes. form or no? Oh, is that what they call is, blue forms? No, it, we uh, call it the FBI profile form because it's yeah. the FBI racial profile form. And like, you know that like started, blackmail, right? blackmail, blackmail, blackmail. You know that started? Blackmail. No, I started in Hinsdale, Illinois. So it was 2003, and I'll, I guess Hinsdale had a complaint that uh, there was too many Hispanics being pulled over. So the next thing you know, a traffic stop went from 30 seconds, if you want to do a warning, to 10 fucking minutes. You had to write it on paper and in the computer. Then it came out, I guess, years and years after this was permanent because they all said, "Well, it's only going to be six months." Fucking permanent. Then it was. Uh, yeah, it was actually a disgruntled Hinsdale employee. I think it was a cop who actually made up that stat and got this thing uh, started. 
It yeah. sucks. I hate those rush because I stress out about them because it's like black. You know, because I work night shift, right? So, who in a black neighborhood, all black neighborhood? Which, by the way, if you go to a white neighborhood in North Carolina, in Raleigh, North Carolina, at two o'clock in the morning, you won't find a car. Like it's ghost town. But you go to the the hood, and it's like uh, it's like a metropolis. It's like everybody's out and about. There's people walking their babies down the roads like 3 a.m. There's people everywhere. Well, guess what the average demographic for somebody at 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning in the hood is? It's like a 25-year-old black male to 30. So, like, all my racial profile farms are like 25-year-old black male, 25, 26-year-old black male, you know, 33 black male. And it just goes on and on and on. If you and, get the um, car, the four white young so guys stressed. driving through it, are you oh, stuck? they're fucked. They Dude, they got so drugs. fucked. They got they're drugs. so fucked. Yep. They're so f- It was like reverse racism. I'm oh, like, bitch, I don't even care if you didn't truth. do it wrong. It's like, I need you. What are you I doing need here? you to go to jail. Like, I write a thousand black people warnings because, like, I never wrote tickets. But, like, <laughs> like 100% white people got tickets. So, I'm like, you're white? Fucking ticket. <laughs> well. <laughs> so, <laughs> somebody asked a good question. Um, what's that? You've, you've got a ton uh, I was reading the question. You said if he's in con- Yes. Uh, if he's got control of a motor vehicle, is he required to show a driver's license? No. You, you, you're, I, as far as I know, you're not required to show a driver's license um, just because the cops made contact with you. Oh, uh, and even if they could, now, like, that'd be like one of those instances. I like, think is the it law backs... Hmm? Right. Yeah. Who, Again, demanding demanding an idea. I apologize. Seizure. What was that? I said, well, yeah, it goes back to asking and demanding. You know, demanding is a seizure. And what's your probable cause or reasonable suspicion? Right. Please right. Car. Yeah. But they're not required to show you ID no. unless it's like a lawful traffic stop where you have access. Oh, Mercury retrograde is striking again. Can you hear me still or no? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, Eric's frozen. See, you know what's the like? What's the worst is when you have like a sus- like a suspicious male or whatever in a neighborhood, like this recent video that he just showed, and you get over there and you're like, "Hey, man!" Like some of the neighbors called, you'd be like, "The neighbors are racist," and I'm like, "Well, um, no, they're they're the same same race as you, bud. So if you're looking suspicious to them, you must look pretty fucking. Just suspicious. don't know how to handle it where they walk up and go, dude. Your asshole neighbor called. Yeah. Got, and you just look, you don't have to answer any questions at all. I'm going to make it look like I'm talking to you for about three minutes. I'm just going to stand here because your neighbor's a dick and I know they're watching. You're not doing anything illegal, I could tell. I'm just going to stay here, nod my head. I'll get my notepad out like I'm writing something and then I'm going to go away. Okay. The guys, just say a word. That's it. All right. All right take We're care. the same fucking yeah. cop, dude. I would do that shit all the time. I would be like, look, dude, I'm only talking to you because I have to talk to you. You don't have to talk back, but let's just pretend we're talking for just a few minutes. So I'm getting your side of the story. And then they're like, oftentimes they're like, what? Like, what? what what's going on? And then they, they start talking to you. And they're like, yeah, I do the same yeah. shit. And that's what I said. I think we talked about it last time, Eric. I said that the rookies are so used to having their heads in the phones and texting that they forgot how to talk to people. They're like, sir, why uh, are you doing here in this car i just walk up and be like hey homie listen some of your neighbors called and they said they don't uh they're kind of uncomfortable with you sitting here you could sit there all you want but uh anyway God, i already know your chance have hated you didn't they no they loved me really? i was officer of the year when i left yeah. oh shit man yeah i was like uh but i was like the running joke you know what i mean i was a running joke like the, i was the running joke yeah yeah i was like super funny super ridiculous over the top if they wanted something ridiculous and over the top, they would be like, yo, TNC. Well, then we have fuck you for you. leaving because we need more cops like you. Well, I, you know, it was the city that fired me. It wasn't the, the police department. It was the city. Mm. Uh, they didn't like me owning a distillery. Oh, oh. Well, you're better off now. I think I'm back. back. I think, oh, <laughs> I think my internet is you're back. Stop it's, fucking with me. It's Mercury retrograde is screwing everything up. I could hear. I could hear everything y'all are saying. I'm in a hotel room, y'all. Like I'm doing the best oh, I can with what I got. I'm surprised we've stayed. Yeah, I'm on base. I'm on my military time. Oh, right now. oh well, thank yeah. you for your service. Yeah, that's why there's no that's why there's no beard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so I was like, oh shit, something's happening. All the kids are playing their video games and my internet's getting slow. No, it's, it's literally <laughs> so, retro. Um, 
screws every uh, internet service and electronic up every every four months. You'll watch yeah. for it. Hey, speaking of which, did you guys see that the nine one one dispatch went down last night no. for like six hours mm. across six no. states total? Six states total lost, and they and this morning the report was that somebody nipped a fiber. Well, they got debunked very quickly because <laughs> every dispatch communication center is independent. And now, later this afternoon, they're like, oh, it, it, it looks like an apparent cyber attack. But we don't know Damn. who. So, like, 911 in six different states. I think it was China. like... Well, I mean, they're all saying it. I, I talked to dispatchers today. Uh, I was going to cover it tomorrow, so... Okay. Um, so somebody asked a good question. Explain the difference in stop and ID laws. Do you have to ID for them just acting, asking? So the stop and ID, there's only certain states that even have that. And you still have to articulate a crime. You still have to articulate that you've got reasonable suspicion to believe that they've committed a crime to stop and identify them in those states. Um, Texas is not one of those. So I don't deal with that very often. Um, I basically in Texas, I can't ID you until you are under arrest. So once you're arrested, then you got to ID. And then if you don't ID, that's another charge. So even when you are required to ID, you still don't have to. You can choose not to, but it will be another charge. And then we'll figure out who you are eventually. So that's that's just how that goes. I, I, I love hearing people say, well, you have to. I'm like, well, the law says you have to. They can't force you to. But you just you just make it very difficult for them to figure out who you are. So that's how that works. Um, let me go back here. All right, I think we're ready to get to some videos. So good, I can stay with you guys for about uh, three, four more minutes. Oh, you got plenty of time. I tried. Uh, share screen. Da, 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 da. Okay, again, we don't know what these videos are going to be. Um, so we are watching them for the first time together. Let me see here. Share. And biggie size here. All right. So um, give shout out to body cam footage and I believe police activity. That's where we got all these videos from today and giving them credit. The first one here is under police activity and all these videos. We don't know what they have. So viewer discretion advised uh, ahead of time. All right. Um, yes, Eli. My name is. I'm at 2730 Sunshine West Plaza. What's closest available cross street? Uh, Corazon Lake. Can you tell me exactly what happened? So there's a gentleman that came in. Ivy. Um, he's an African American. He has a black hoodie with a with a brown like beanie. Came in and bought some cigarettes, and when I looked at his ID, um, and I'm sorry, I couldn't remember the first name. I was a little frazzled, but his first name was Jeremy. His ID came from South Carolina. Jeremy Smith. And it Smith. looked just like the guy that shot the officer, the state police officer. And how long ago was this? Less than five minutes ago. And did he uh, leave on foot or in a vehicle? Um, I, he was on foot, I believe. Which way I'm actually going? breaking this whole thing. Uh, I might go away the camera by the time we get here. <laughs> okay. Good we'll for her, her for recognizing. Thank you. Yeah. This guy's yeah, a huge piece of shit. He killed a paramedic and a cop. Except for. Mm. Units, do we have someone that answered Dennis Chavez and. Okay, so let's stop real quick. The first thing that I'm concerned about, obviously, is this is a suspect in a homicide case. So. I'm going to be up here when dealing with that guy. That means as soon as I make contact with that dude, my gun's going to be out. It's not necessarily going to be pointed at his face or anything like that, but my gun's going to be out. I'm going to be ready. Anderson. 149 Brown's Ryan and Dennis Chavez. I'm guessing he's getting his rifle. Ten four. So we have a large perimeter with visual containment of the entire area. Wait, is the uh, cop already dead in this one? I don't know. Never watched it. So <laughs> I'm guessing they just said they set up a perimeter. You're not setting yeah, up a perimeter. The, the, the cops already got to be dead. 
Especially since yeah. the dispatch yeah. call was for the guy. Dude, that it was the bad, bro. He like the oh god, it's so bad. The cop was like in the passenger seat, like begging for his life and shit. Fuck. What? Oh fuck, I didn't see that. So <sighs> yeah, it's all right. One. So they know what they're dealing with, and I like this approach. They didn't just take two officers and try to go find this guy. They got in the area and set up a large perimeter. Is what it sounds like. So kudos to them. Man, it sucks that Lizzo has to go. I would love to get his take on the end of this case. Can you just fast forward to the end before he goes? Hey, bro, come here. I gotta be. I, I How's he gonna know what happens? Just go all the way to the here. end of the Drop video. He's running, he's running. Get over here, bro. He's running uh, westbound. He's running westbound. He's running westbound. Yeah. 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 He's not a throwing list. Shot fire, shot fire. Got a gun right here. You just threw it over. Oh, yeah. Right Don't fucking move, bro. Don't fucking move. Don't fucking move. Cut him now. Don't fucking move. All right. <laughs> they just blew his shoulder off, by the way. <laughs> okay. So they shot him. Um, but they he was give... armed. They saw him throw a gun. Yeah. So now that he's down on the ground. Mm. The next steps, and I know people are going to hate me for saying this, but it's first aid. Yeah. And they I give him a really, why do I hate you for saying something that's easier responsibility? It, it, they well, give him really good. This one would be hard because he killed a paramedic and then he killed a cop, um, a female paramedic and a, a male cop. Uh, a Justin Hare is the name of the the, uh, the officer. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I like, just, listen, it would be so hard. That would be the hardest thing for me. Um, it, that would be really hard for me to give that kind of care. Like those guys are really empathetic and really compassionate. I'm telling you right now, like I'm just not that guy. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I would like go through the motions that I'm trying, but I would not be giving a fuck. I would have zero empathy. I would yeah. just be literally going through the motions. It would be almost like that CIT training you get. You know what I mean? Like it's not really real. Like it's just going <laughs> through the motions, yeah. just going through the PowerPoints. That's how I would be giving care to this guy. Yeah. It sucks. So, it sucks. Uh, as on a human level, I absolutely get that. But but and, and this is where everybody fucking hates my position, especially citizens who support the police. That kind of mentality has to be eradicated because we chose this profession and we knew Joe shit the ragman's gonna come along and they still have due process under everything and our care. It fucking sucks. It sucks. As many times you want to grab somebody by the throat for smacking their kid or doing something like this, like shooting a fucking cop. But the second that that line is blurred, where all of a sudden the street cop becomes the one who actually dishes out the judicial uh, punishment, that's a fucking problem. So, I mean, like, what's the, what, what's the policy in just fucking putting a gauze and bandage on him, putting the pressure dressing, doing all the things you're required to do without doing the whole, you're going to be okay, man. It's oh, going to no, be all right. We'll We've got medics work. on the way. Like, I wouldn't oh. be shit i no. would just be doing my fucking job and being dead silent i wouldn't be telling that mother if, i mean i might be whispering like go to the light motherfucker oh that's yeah i'm like, okay i'm with you on that one i was under the impression you're like i'm going through the motions it's just like oh look and the no, 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 no. Oh, i'll do it i'll right. put the pressure okay. dressing on i'll do it correctly by the book by the standard but i'm not gonna oh, put all the fucking shit. jazz on it like the you're gonna be okay buddy like it's you know, it's all over now. Uh, no, I, I, I would, no. but these guys are great. These guys are way better than me. Trust me. Like I'm not shitting on these guys. These guys did it perfectly. I think in my opinion, these guys did it the right way. I, I, oh no, I misunderstood I, you then. I misunderstood you. No, they did hundred percent. Um, I'll go fuck myself now. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> guys, I do have to bail. Uh, right, we'll see yeah, you on that one. That was a completely righteous shoot. I do want to know too. Um, was it, uh, shit. Tennessee versus Garner was the fleeing felon one, right? Yes. I've been so long. And we, yeah. you still can shoot uh, at fleeing felons. I think there's 15 but fleeing But if they've felons. been arrested, if they've been arrested, right? If they're, Already. Well, they're fleeing well, from custody. That they're they have a, to you, fleeing from custody. I think which you have to articulate that they're an imminent threat to the public. That guy, you could shoot. At the, so basically, him running and shoot with a gun, 100% they could shoot oh, as he runs away. Oh, for fuck sure. Yeah, he dude. was fleeing. Yeah. Fuck you, Tennessee versus <laughs> Carmen. Cool. Uh, I'll ya. talk to you guys soon, but I got to run. Tell Give people how to find you. Uh, just uh, Dominic Izzo on social media. Slide in my DMs and either give me nudes or fuck off. I don't care about your complaints. 
Yeah. Later. <laughs> Take it easy, buddy. Oh, shit. I love Izzo. Um, okay. So somebody had a question. Let me scroll back. Oh, you can go back and play the video. I didn't mean to interrupt it. I just wanted to hear his oh, part no, right. on the, the uh, like, I just, those cops were like super empathetic and they're like doing a really good job. I like me personally, I don't, I would not be that cop. I, I'll tell you right now, like I have been standing over, um, I actually have a really terrible story. Now that I'm not a cop, I'll, I'll probably get fired for, I would have gotten fired for saying it, but if you want that story, I'll tell it to you at some point. Um, or even on the show, it's great, but I'm the kind of guy that will literally fucking sing Kumbaya on your way out. Mm. I'd say that's the operator in you, sir. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. so somebody asked, is an officer in trouble? Um, if a, I think they're saying if a citizen intervenes by putting the suspect in a rear naked chokehold, <laughs> is a citizen in trouble for intervening no. or the officer for allowing the situation to escalate? No, because a rear naked choke is a use of force issue within a policy of a department. A right, it's, not uh, against the law. it's not against the law. And especially if you are intervening in your intentions not to kill, it's to put the person to sleep, to neutralize him so the officer can help do his job or even use it as a control. It, or it, even if it's a deadly force situation, if it's a deadly force situation, then you're good all day. But let's say it's not. Let's say the guy's fighting with the cop and you come in and you're like, I'm going to hold him in a R, you know, RNC and try to get, you know, either put him out or just at least hold it and let him know like, hey, dude, I can put you out at any time. Stop fighting. Um, which, again, is another reason I am wish police were allowed to use it i will i'm an advocate of the rear naked choke as a control method and as a uh non-lethal force option because thousands of dojos around the nation if people are put to sleep every single day and if you know what you're doing i get rear naked choked about six times a day four days a week that's just from his wife, guys. Like, Fighting for my <laughs> life every single fucking time. <laughs> the white I've never belt died. Trials and tribulations. I've maybe. never died, baby. Yeah. I've never died. Yeah. Uh, and if, no, if a dojo is yeah. willing to, to take that that liability as an LLC, like the fact that a police department won't is ridiculous to me. Isn't that bizarre? But also, I'll tell you this, Davey, you're going to lose the civil suit. Yeah. Yeah. You'll probably, if you, if you get civilly sued, You'll lose um, fucking fives you, of dollars. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just make sure while you're doing it, you, you yell out your LLC. Like, I'm doing this Davey's, for my business. <laughs> Davey's a like, rugby player, so you know he ain't got no money. Oh, that's true. That's and they true. don't want your cleats. They don't want your cleats, bub. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. I didn't, Ward said, I didn't know Didn't that citizen in New York get prosecuted for attempting to control an out of control person on the subway. I don't know that case. So, uh, so he's talking about the Daniel Penny case. Um, Daniel Penny case is a hundred percent a political case. I've covered this in depth for hours. I think the Daniel Penny case, uh, if you really want to go into it for just, I'll go very quickly into it. But the Daniel Penny case on both sides is, is, is like that song is like that movie crash. Um, what you had was uh, the, the, the suspect here in this case, uh, his mom was murdered at 13 years old and they were, uh, it was, she was found on the Brooklyn bridge in a suitcase. Um, and, and the news doesn't mainstream media doesn't put this out. I put this out on my podcast cause I like to tell the totality of the story, but you know, at 13 years old, you wake up one day and all over the news is that somebody was found on the Brooklyn bridge stuffed into a suitcase, a dead body. And then you find out at school that it's your mother, that it's your, your, you, you, uh, I, mean, I don't want to say it, but you know what kind of mom he probably had stuffed into the, in this thing. He ends up having to go live with his grandparents because he didn't have a father. Um, and so, or maybe the father was the one that killed her or I, I can't remember this specific. It's been a, over a year since I covered it. But anyway, I'm telling you right now, you kill my mom. My mom ends up dead in a suitcase on a fucking bridge and the whole world knows about it. There's no grandparents. There's no God. There's no psychologist. There's no medication that will keep me from fucking the world in its ass. And so this guy lives this, you know, uh, eight or nine year, more years of his life, completely fuck the world, addicted to drugs. He runs away at like 14 or 15 from the grandparents' house. And Daniel Penny on the other side joins the Marines. He's got this grandiose idea He about the Marines. He becomes an infantryman in the Marines. It's all about kill, 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 kill. He gets very little deployment, very little kill, kill, kill. Decides to get out of the military early. 
he doesn't really have this whole kill, kill, kill mindset, but that's what he's gotten out with. So he travels abroad to try to do some like peyote or whatever that shit is, goes on like some kind of like psychedelic journey um, to where he decides he wants to go back from Texas and become some kind of an engineer of sorts. So he goes to New York from Texas. He's only been there for less than a week, I think it was, if I remember correctly. And he finds himself on the subway with this dude who absolutely hates the fucking world and God and everything else in it because reasonably his because his mother was murdered and stuffed into a suitcase and dan and he tells everybody on the plane give me money give me food or i'll fucking kill you and daniel penny's like stuck in this weird pacifist but i'm also infantry because daniel penny was trying to be a pacifist that's why he went and did like peyote it's not peyote though it was the, what is that shit that everybody's trying to do down DMT? In Peru right now yeah dmt and all this other shit Masculine so he's trying to do all that yeah and he's trying to get in on that train and find his you know, manifest his destiny and shit and be like a pacifist, but he's still a fucking Marine. Right. And right. so now these two extremely weird, um, uh, paths cross. And of course, you know, it explodes into what happened on the subway that day. But here's the thing that I want everybody to, to know about the Daniel Penny case, 15 New Yorkers missed their stop and stayed on the train for 15 minutes plus with Daniel Penny trying to help Daniel Penny. Now find 15 conservatives on a subway and find me 15 people on a subway that are willing to miss their stop to help you. That dude must have been a huge piece of shit for 15 New Yorkers to miss their stop and help Daniel Penny. I don't think politics had anything to do with it. Um, and then you, but you, you know, on the other side of the coin, you've got these Mexican dudes and these black kids that are punching women in the streets and robbing them and getting no bond. Daniel Penny is still, uh, you know, I think he's probably going to go to prison. I think that I think it's because he's white. And, Damn. and um, it's a very sad case that the guy died. But uh, if you look at it from both angles, that guy needed to die. He was going to live that way until he died. And I would be the same way, right? Like, you kill my mom, I will fuck the world until the world just fucks me and wins and I die. There was no other alternative course for this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So very sad case all the way around. I don't think Daniel Penny did anything wrong. And I also empathize with the piece of shit, Michael, you know, the Michael Jackson impersonator. I forgot his name now. Um, you know, I feel bad for the kid because honestly. Is there video of all this? Huh? Is there video of all this? Um, uh, very little. I mean, it, dude, it's very anticlimactic too. Like he's in a perfect rear naked choke. He's sitting back. He's calm. There are people like shaking the dude's feet. I mean, they're begging the guy, just stop fighting, just stop fighting. And he's like being very calm. Daniel Penny was like very calm during the whole thing. You know, and, and listen, 15 witnesses are on the side. There's like absolutely no witnesses against Daniel Penny. No, but, but you know, the New York, the fucked up New York court system is doing exactly kind of what they do with the OJ case. It's like, oh, okay, well, we're not going to let you testify as a witness. Oh, this witness over here. Yeah, uh, here's a reason why you can't testify because they don't want the narrative being told that Daniel Penny was at all uh, um, okay with this. And, and furthermore, to go on with that, vigilanteism is going to be absolutely the key topic in New York going into June and July for the next uh, election season. That's my Tansterdamas prediction. I think because right now New York City is so out of control that your only option is to be a vigilante. And I think that's going to be very dangerous for the, and I think they're going to uh, weaponize that politically. But anyway, sorry. Oh. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to. Uh, do that to you. I'm not sure what Teresa Flobert is trying to say here. She says, I get stay out of the comments, but you have to interact some way Acknowledge your audience. That is respectful. <laughs> oh, Teresa, we're acknowledging. Have we not in acknowledged here. anybody? I mean, by the way, uh, I love Teresa. I she's been a <laughs> long time follower, long time fan, and I, she's probably being actually like a little bit sarcastic. I, I would guess. Oh, okay. Oh, Guns like, Cafe says ayahuasca. That's what I was trying to say. Ayahuasca. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. I actually put that in the comments too. I said oh. so. So Teresa, I don't know if you can see it or not, but we are also responding uh, in the chat. And anytime there's a question. Uh, I put their, I, I'm, I'm putting people's comments all throughout the thing. She's probably so. behind. She's probably tuning in late. Um, I do okay. like this comment though, really fast. It's, uh, it says, um, oh, I, it's gone now. Uh, what, did, what did it say? Oh, can you go back down? Uh, oh, Daniel Penny is being railroaded. He's being subwayed. Oh, look at you. <laughs> Kingslayer Demacles says Democles. 
<laughs> Damocles. Uh, Daniel Penny is being railroaded. No, sir. Yeah. No, sir. He's being subwayed. <laughs> The comedian and him couldn't resist. That's <laughs> <laughs> too easy. Um, let me see. Uh, okay, let's get to another video here since that's what the people want. All right, again, this one's from Police Activity. Cindy Thompson, what's up? I see you saying hello. Uh, all right, let's uh, biggie size and turn the volume up and play. This one's only about five minutes long. What's so. your emergency? There's a guy over here with a knife trying to, to stab me from the window. Okay, where are you? I'm here in Midtown Chevron. Okay. Chevron? Like, what's the phone number in case it disconnects? Uh, okay, it, never mind. Where is he with the knife? He's outside, trying to come in. Is the door locked? Yeah, it's locked. Buy a gun. Buy a I gun. Right? He tried, to, he tried to stab you? Police are coming. No, yeah, do not I talk to him. Drunk. Don't talk to him, okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. Don't you talk to him. Don't even look at him. I wouldn't Close mind you telling him that police the are coming. That might change no, his mind. No, not in the head. His hand that he's trying to stab me. I understand, but you window. said you hit him. Where did you hit him? Uh, in the hand where uh, he was holding hold the on. knife. Hold on. This is what irritates me with call takers. <laughs> Shut the fuck up and ask the pertinent questions. Where you hit him doesn't matter. Get that shit later. <laughs> Where is he at? How big's the knife? Like, what hand is he? What's he wearing? Is he still trying to actively get in? These are the questions you ask. You don't ask, well, where'd you hit him at? Did he flinch? Did he hit you back? Like, I don't give a shit about any of that. I want my officers that are coming to the scene to know who they're looking for, what hand it should be in or might be in, and what that weapon looks like. That's why this could be, bro. This could be like a rookie. This could be a one year dispatcher. You never know. And you don't know what you don't know. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, so I'm glad you opened up that can of worms because, in my opinion, call takers should be light duty officers if you can swing it because yeah, they know I mean, the like, questions to ask. Like, it's not that doesn't exist in my department, I, at least. That well, exists at my department. I, 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 at least I worked with a dispatcher uh, on my podcast that, that came from a department that did that. But in mine, yeah. it's like you're a dispatcher or you're a cop. There's no right. <clears throat> intermixing. And our dispatch was like the fucking Pentagon, dude. Like or, you can't you can't bring a gun in there. It's crazy. Right. Or the overwatch supervisor of your call takers is a cop. I think they should have to do ride alongs. Yeah, that would help, too. But um, I'll, I'll keep playing this. So, so I hit his hand with the People bat. get upset. How large is the knife? Show the video. Right here, he's standing looking <laughs> How at me. large is the knife? Uh, it's a, like a pocket knife. Okay. A pocket knife. Not a is fucking knife. Is he white black Hispanic? He's first. looking at me. Is he white black Hispanic? What? Yeah. He's, no. Uh, white. Is white? What is he wearing top to bottom? Uh, black, gold, mm -hmm. and I can't see what he's wearing. Did he say yoked? Police are coming. <laughs> I don't think he's. Okay, don't talk oh. to him. Don't antagonize him. Yoked. I don't want him to get to you. Can you, just <laughs> you would never get me. You would never get me. Yeah, I'm here inside. Okay. <laughs> don't provoke him. You'll oh, never get she did a ride along as a dispatcher. That's awesome. I mean, I think. Stay yeah. on the line with you. Tell me if anything. I loved our dispatchers, though. Yeah. Like honestly, okay. there was yeah. one that was a cunt. But mine, mine are pretty solid. Where I'm at. One cigarette. So give him cigarette. Did he try robbing oh you? Oh my god, we're getting... Right, just get to the video. He he Put the knife down! Oh, I can only ask you so many times, so please! Yes, it started? Here. Put the knife down! Okay, so immediately, Tansy, where yeah. are we located? Uh, this is at 2 o'clock in the morning, it looks like, uh, at a Chevron. Okay. Um, and so, that is a white dude... In a trench coat? <laughs> is that what it was? Trouble. Yep. But no, what's your, what is them. your concern with a taser or a firearm in your location? Ga gasoline. But, I mean, dude, you got a white dude with a trench coat. This could be Blade. You yeah, know, could. he could be in the Matrix. And we've already had one video on here when you were with us where a guy presented a sword. Yeah. So, so I'm shooting yep. him. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, right off the bat. <laughs> oh, Will Cree said, no samurai sword? <laughs> he knew where we were going with this. Um, 
So that is going to be the concern is. Yeah, but I don't care because, I mean, how many shootouts have you gone to in the hood, gang on gang at gas stations? They've never blown up. Uh, but that's not my concern. My concern is look where I'm shooting towards. I might, I might hit the pump. Yeah, but I don't mind shooting. Explode. I don't mind shooting it's not around the movies. It. It's Dude, not the it movies. does. Have you seen you the can- one where the motorcycle guy got lit on fire by a taser? Yeah, but that's not. But like, you could shoot that gas pump right there, and it would never explode. I don't know. I don't know that. I'm not taking it's not that chance. Explode. How do you know? Bro, how many gang fights happen at, at gas stations <laughs> every single night across the country? Just because it Hundreds. hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it's not possible. I wouldn't even be thinking that. I would. That would be like, damn, fuck, not move. Me. Keep going this way. <laughs> that gas pump is not going to explode. If he presents a gun, I'm lighting him up. But if it's a knife, I'm keeping my distance until I get a good shot. So, well, for sure. Oh, my God. Put the knife down. I but how cool would it be? Wait, pause hustle, it. Please. How cool would it be? Like in those video games where it's like you see the guy, but you shoot the barrel of fuel next to him just to watch oh, him it, blow up. It makes him fly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. All right. So this is what sucks in these situations is you're out on foot and now you've got a mobile suspect and now you're trying to decide shit. Like I can't stop traffic. Now, luckily it doesn't look like there's a lot of traffic right now. Right. But now you got to start thinking about that. It doesn't look like the buildings are open. Like I, these two businesses that I see right here yeah, don't look one, open. So, wait a um, but let's see. I think that's reflecting. Get on the ground! Get stop, the please! Right now. Do not! Okay, stop. I, <clears throat> this is what I have a huge problem with, man. Like th- this is the whole robotics thing. This, and, and I get it. Like it's for court. But, like, we beat that horse to death. Right. He like, knows the it's stop. It's reasonable. He knows you're a cop. You've already, you don't have to say, stop, police, stop, police. Like, I know that they teach you in the academy to make it known and to keep saying it. But, like, it's like, you got to think reasonably. He knows you're a cop. The courts are going to know that you're a cop. The jury's going to know you're a cop. Like, let's start thinking of more logical discussions here. Like, hey, man, where did you get that trench coat? Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. try anything. But, like, this whole changes, stop cop is not. Of mind. Yeah. Right. This stop police thing is dumb. It's not going to. Like, I get it. You have to say it. But you don't have to say it on repeat 10,000 fucking times. Like, be a human. Treat this guy like a human. Like, eh, you, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you what to say to this guy. What I would say is, stop. Where'd you get that trench coat? And then everybody would be like, what the fuck? And just see yeah. if it works. Yeah, it might. <laughs> yeah who's gonna he's win the like, game tonight yeah he's like coles <laughs> and you're like oh yeah throw off his oodle loop i like it <laughs> um ward said send in the social workers <laughs> uh we got a spammer that tried to come in through Ooh, the chat okay. i think i hit it but i can't tell sorry uh, for bothering you well then stop yeah. bothering us yeah i deleted it off of the chat window but people just start typing get that shit out of my fucking thing <laughs> but um okay let's keep going Get on the ground, please don't make us do this, please, please put the knife. Okay, so here's the other issue. We're well within 21 feet. I think it's our responsibility to keep creating distance if we can. It looks like we can because this guy could easily sprint towards you and get a few little cuts in on you. Uh, so that's always dangerous. Wait, wait, like, do you understand? Like, hang on. Do you do you understand? Like, if you're a law enforcement officer watching this. You understand that this is ridiculous, right? Like all of you guys yelling and screaming like he's physically stabbing you is dumb. That would never have flown when I was a cop. Like they would have been like, yo, shut the fuck up. Just yeah. shut up, Eric. Like he's not, you're not dying. Go the fuck, go get a, go get a donut out of the Chevron and shut up. And they'd be <laughs> like, yo, listen, what is going on right now? Like, are you good? Why, why do we have a knife? Like, why are we banging on the door? Like this whole, like. Put the knife down. Stop. Like it's, it's, that is theatrics. Right. It's theatrics. Yeah. I, and I, I think a lot of it has to do with because these videos and body cam are so prevalent and you do, now we've got a habit in the culture. We've seen it on video where we keep seeing cops say, stop, stop, put the knife down, stop, stop, stop. And, And they haven't been taught or they haven't seen any other way. Like you think screaming, please. 
as loud as you can from 16 feet away is going to change this fucking guy's mind? Or do you think maybe you went, sir, stop, what, put the knife down. This is yeah. ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like, I have a conversation with a guy, but like, you're screaming at him, like, please, put the Damn. knife down. He's like, what the fuck, dude? Like, this escalated <laughs> real quick. Davey's coming up with some bangers. What pre workout do you use? <laughs> How much do you bench? Yeah, like, bro, you, you, you ever heard of Jay and Silent Bob? Because you kind of look like him. Huh? You're right. <laughs> Puts is the there cameras? Is this a movie? Is this a movie? <laughs> <laughs> Where's Jay at? I know he's around here somewhere. Oh shit, that's funny. All right, let's keep down. We all fucking shoot you. All right. Get on the fucking ground. All right. There next. you go. There you go. There's that's the authoritarian. Gonna that's There's gonna work. We're gonna There's fucking show you. The guy's like, oh really? With the, those guns pointing at me? Like you're serious? Okay, uh, hang on. We got so on the wrong foot. Get, get on, on the ground. ground. No. Come and get a less lethal shotgun. Okay, I was gonna ready to say if you tell all right, we told you all this shit and you told me no. Uh, it's, it's done. I'm, I'm going less lethal. One of you are going less lethal. Um, I'll usually take that. I'll take that burden because I'm not the best pistol shot. So I trust my boys more than myself, but nobody has even tried to like talk reasonably with this guy first. Like I get such a responsibility, but like, I don't know. I, it just, it drives me nuts that no supervisor is saying like, everybody stop screaming for a minute, dude. What do you, what is going on? Why are we doing this tonight? What like what's is it drugs? Is it alcohol? What what is it tonight? Yeah. Well, noon, and they'll answer you. I promise. It works. I've never had to go through this with anybody, but I also don't scream and shout at them like a fucking psycho. Right. So, and I think you know it, it goes into your uh, stress level. Like how me, I have done. I've dealt with this repeatedly over my career. I am desensitized to this completely. Yeah. I don't show up to these calls and, and I'm amped up. But if you're a newer officer and this is the first time and you're like, oh, you almost killed somebody and now we're getting here and we can't let him almost kill someone else and you're all amped up and oh my God, I'm so close to him. You might stab me. This is, I think that's what you get here. Like, you know, you know, you're not getting stabbed by that guy. <laughs> you, you never know, know that you're going to shoot that dude dead with three dudes there. Like, you know, hey, you're not going to. Have you ever seen the Matrix? If you've got a trench coat on. <laughs> okay, I forgot about the trench coat. Yeah, that does. Okay, so let's see right. where this goes. Put it down, please. Uh, you stop, stop. You stop him. Now, somebody already said I got the, the beanbag round. So why are we not lighting them up with beanbag rounds? That's what I'd be doing here. Um, again, we're not trying to Monday morning quarterback, but. These are the options I would be using as this is going. I would already be shooting him with these beanbag rounds. Stop! Get on the fucking Get on the ground! Stop! Stop walking! Get on the fucking ground! Stop walking towards us! You will be stopped! Get on the ground! Get on the ground right now! Get on the ground! Get on the fucking ground! Get on the fucking ground! You will get shot! Damn, that's a lot. Humble. That so, is a lot. Yeah, the, the second dude just kept going. That's um, a lot. He may have to answer for those. Um, uh, those are a lot. Um... I don't know, man. Like, I, I, it doesn't sit well with me. Like, I also I wouldn't want to be a cop right now, and and it sucks. But like, yeah, this is so much different than it was ten years ago. Um, I and listen, I get it that that's your natural response to want to yell. But I and I did that as a rookie, but I was yelled at very quickly. Like, I'd be like, "Hey, sir, drop the knife!" And like immediately, somebody'd be like, "Dude, shut the fuck up." What are you Relax. doing? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, calm down. Like, yeah. you calm down. <laughs> you know, yeah. and now we're fighting, and then the guy's yeah. like, uh. It's just like when that rookie's in a pursuit and you hear the Sarge get over the air, and you're like, they, you hear him say, take a breath and <laughs> tell me what you have. <laughs> and then they're like, like uh, 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 okay, okay. Cause they're, they're just yelling out the plate yeah. in the direction. And they're like, Charlie Foxtrot, leave us. Like, calling in an airstrike. I'm like, <laughs> fucking relax, kid. <laughs> that was me. That was me. But, <laughs> as a rookie, but like I had so many cops to just, you know, reel me in. And I feel like some of these videos that we break down these days, there doesn't seem to be anybody on scene that is kind of going like, Hey, uh, like, let's just shut the fuck. Let's just chill for a second. 
and see what exactly do we have here. Yelling isn't going to do anything. Like you've already tried it. It's, it doesn't work. Yeah. We don't have to yell. He can hear you. He can hear you. But and, that, and that's what the problem that I have with the body camera is because it's like, you might as well do this, Eric. You might as well just every time you go on the call, you might as well go. Is this thing on? Yeah. <laughs> Sir, stop. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, stop. You're, per- you're performing stop. for the court. Yeah. Right. That's what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I like guns and cafes a little outside the box. I mean, if you're already somewhat justified in using lethal force, which I think they were just given the proximity, yeah. um, but you got three guys there, maybe a fourth that we couldn't see. Hey, dude, go get the car. Like, it's still lethal force. It's still considered lethal him, force. But he's not going to die. But he's not going to die. So if I'm justified in using lethal force, I would rather you take your chances with a car where you're not at, at threat and my other people are there just in case. Um, and then Ward asked, uh, was he holding the knife to his neck? No, he was holding it out like this. Uh, I'm not sure if you can quite tell what I'm doing here, but he was holding it out like that by his neck. So, um, but yeah, I, I really like, like we wouldn't know if this was drugs or not drugs because nobody's fucking asked him. Right. Nobody you tried know, to hold, hold you, can, you can say, Hey, are you drunk or are you high? And he'd be like, I'd be like, are you yeah. drunk high or just angry? Like, what is it? And then like you, and, and honestly, like he'll just sit there and breathe and stare at you. Cause he's not going to know what to do. And you just keep going with that dialogue. Hey, yeah. listen, I need to know right now, are you drunk, high, or just angry? And be like, man, I'm so fucking angry. Okay, yeah. what do you what do you uh what are you angry about? Is it like are you mad at the cashier? Did he fucking hit you? He fucking wouldn't give me any cigarettes. He wouldn't let me in. You know what I mean? Like, and we have like yeah. a dialogue, we have something going on, but this yeah. I can't so you, you had nothing at that point. There was no words spoken. I, no, really it was just put so, the fucking knife down, stop, yeah. you know. Yeah, you you've got, and then one person command and control. That's the other thing. Like everybody else, shut the fuck up. Yeah. And if you're not getting anywhere, I'm gonna step in and be like, hey, you know, Viking guy, whatever his name was, relax. Let me let me try. You're not working because you're aggro. So. Code black. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Like, bro, go squeeze your stress ball. Yeah, when you're done. I get it. You're the tank for this this operation. I need. Okay, uh, when, when it's time for him to die, we'll let you shoot him first. Yeah, yeah I need the deal. Paladin right now. Where's my paladin at? <laughs> my nerd talk. You know, but we're seeing this a lot, and um, it's a growing trend that I've seen in the last six years, four years um, since George Floyd, where it's theatrics, man. And and theatrics are going to get, get killed. Listen, I remember like, you know, when I was in special operations in the military and going through some uh, special operations shooting courses, um, one of the instructors was like all about not having theatrics on the range, like. If we're going to shoot and we're going to scan our sector, we're really going to scan a sector. You're going to scan 360 degrees. If you have to holster to do that so you're not flagging your buddies, which that doesn't exist, um, then we're going to scan 360. But we're not going to shoot and just go look left, look right, because that's not real. That's not right. – those are theatrics. That's just that's just – that's just doing something. It's like touching the back of the car when you approach it. Like yes. when, is, when is fingerprints from when a When have you ever been caught that? You know what I mean? Like, when has it ever been relevant? No, just somebody, some, you know, so it's all theatrics. And right now we're in this day and age of policing with body cams that everything is theatrics. We're just doing things because yeah. everything else is kind of doing it. And it's not solving cases. It's not saving lives at all. Yeah. Somebody said, Davey said, is there any chance there's a breakdown of the Dexter Reed video? Donut operator has the raw footage available. Um, Didn't we just do Dexter Reed last week? Uh, you guys might have. Uh, I just did I have Dexter not. Reed last week. Uh, wait, which one was Dexter Reed really quick? Just that give was me the white SUV sentence. um, where the cops the- like surrounded. He shot at the cops and then they lit him up and it was, he was, I, just, I did the Dexter Reed case. I know that. Yeah. For yeah. Fact. It was, that was very recent. Um, so yeah, I, ha- um, so Davey for, for my stuff, what I do is I try to watch videos I've never seen before so we can watch it and break it down as it's happening. Um, versus like where failure to stop, they'll get a video and both parties that are involved with the breakdown have seen it. They're able to mark notes and say what they saw that was really good, what could be fixed and and what they think overall. So, um, Oh yeah. We just, we just did Dexter read this week. Yeah. Yeah. No. What a fucking so, piece of shit he is. Um, so, by the way, he's not a kid, but he's not a kid. Did you know that? 
No, I don't know shit Dexter about Reed, him. Dexter Reed is not a kid. Uh, That's the new George Floyd. He's uh, the new. He's the new George. It's not. It's not even close. Sorry, not even close. it's not close because you it's shot not, at police. I don't give a fuck what you not, did. There, not, no point does that justify you shooting. And, and the media is just making it look like he's like a kid. He's twenty fucking six years old. <laughs> Convicted felon. What's it say? Do you do older non-shooting breakdown? Yeah, we. I don't know if these videos are going to be shootings. If they're going to be a traffic stop, that everything goes really nice. I don't know. All I do is I go to these sites like Police Activity and I go to their latest and I click all the videos that say that they're about, you know, five minutes or less. That's what I try to go for anyway. Um, Kingslayer, Democles, we have like over a hundred breakdowns on Failure to Stop of cases from the LAPD riot cases all the way from the Ranger Battalion that took over Seattle. I mean, yeah, we, 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 there's tons out there that we that yeah. Failure to Stop does, but... Well, let's get to another one. Uh, this one is only. Let me see here. This I got is, about ten more minutes too. Okay. Well, this one's I have five to be minutes. In Maryland. Long. Well, no I'll, I'll go until the end of this one. How about okay. that? Sounds good. As long as it takes. Let's go here. Boom. One tricky. Copy tag. Right, I got stop first. Dude, look at this rat. <laughs> In his car, <laughs> he's got to have his GPS. It he's got his, he yeah, got his Magellan, got, bro. Is that like the tape deck that you put? You know, like where you put the cassette tape in so that you can play your CD player Walkman through your radio, <laughs> right through your speakers. That's what it bro, looks that would like. drive me nuts. Uh, that's that's crazy. And this can't. This is from 2024, y'all. Like, use that's your a cell phone like a use your cell phone like a grown adult. Do they have Bluetooth. Mount. There's mounts that you can, like, I have one on my MDC. It just magnetizes my phone right next to the monitor on your laptop. And it just, it's a side-by-side. And I don't need all that shit. Dude, so, that is hilarious. Anyway. Good for him. Really. He's probably 40. <laughs> <laughs> He's had that Magellan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, ma'am. Get a copy tag. Oh, I love the hood. I love the ghetto. Pause really quick. I just like to take in the ghetto where the dumpster is completely fucking full and overloaded and couches are everywhere because nobody gives a fuck. It's government housing. They're not paying for it. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I can smell this scene right now. Look at those pretty pink trees, though. Sure. I see a spider of some sort on the guy. Yeah, show. that's creepy. Like an alien. Yeah. Is there somebody in that? I can't tell. I would be looking through the windshield. Bro, that is stressing me out. Look through the windshield. What are you doing? Oh, I don't like this at all. That's the one thing people don't usually tint too bad if they do tint it. There you go. Look through the windshield. Use your flashlight. Now, the problem is I don't know why we were called here. So, yeah, it I'm, says Richmond police officer shoots suspect armed with an AR style rifle. So if I'm looking into this vehicle, I mean, if this is a whatever, if this was the call, was this car, then, yeah, I'm going to I'm probably going to pull up and create or get close enough to create positive pressure on the vehicle. I'm not going to touch it, but get close enough just in case. And then, then move around and try to see into that vehicle from the front. You don't have a Q beam on your fucking car. A what? The Q beam light. What the fuck is that? The light that you, you don't have like a light that's uh, on. A oh, the spotlight. Yeah. I oh Q yeah. Beam. Yeah. Oh yeah. He doesn't. I live by that. Yeah, I would light that car up like a Christmas tree. So they appear to be sleeping in the car. Mm -hmm. Male, female. They all hooked up. Okay, so he spotted people in the car sleeping. Oh, that's okay. All right, so he can oh, see. Complaining. The male get out, jump on top of the car, and pull a gun out. 
The dude that's sleeping in the car? Yeah, I don't know if he's sleeping. Wait, 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 what? Hey, hang on, stop, stop, stop. What, what, what did he just fucking say? I think he said that the call was the guy jumped up on top of the car with oh. a gun. Oh, but yeah. now they appear to be sleeping. Okay. So my question is, how long has the call been out? That would be my first question. I'd call, I would call dispatch, say, hey, what time did this come out? And if they tell me the call came out five minutes ago, now I know sure. he's full of shit. He ain't sleeping. I thought he was like, they're in the car sleeping. I'm going to jump on the hood and pull my gun out. I was like, what? <laughs> That's not what he said. <laughs> That's not what he said. Okay. okay, uh, okay. Oh shit. Let's see what the comments sure. said real quick. Uh, it's been crazy lately. All these cities. How you been? Glad I'm able to catch a bit of a live again. Thank you, TJR. Appreciate you. Um, uh, mostly, I think most of these are your so people. Just chatting too. with each other. Just chatting yeah. with each other. Okay. You guys fucking pay attention. <laughs> Squirrel. But I didn't. I didn't. Talk. Come back to a 2024. All right. So here's my problem with this right now. We got a report of a person with a gun that jumped up on top of that car, and now you say they're sleeping in the vehicle. I don't like taking my eyes off and creating a blind spot. If I already got eyes on, I want to keep what we call the known. When you start searching a room, you don't take your eyes off stuff you've already searched as you're trying to clear the rest of the room. You, you don't go back out in the hallway and you're like, oh, let me go in and finish this room. You have to keep eyes on with what you've already seen. So it's the same with a vehicle. If I got eyes on the people in that car, that dude in the vehicle needs to get out off his ass and come to me. But he just rolled up. So yeah. I'm, I'm putting it on the officer that's on foot. Like, hold your position. Tell that guy, get over here. So. Silver, Jose, Odor. What do you want to do with it? <clears throat> I'll get knocking and see if that can talk. Let's do a knock and talk. I like it. Are you have to. I don't see any other way out. No, because if you don't and then they go shoot people, you're at, you're liable. Yeah, fucking hood. Okay, again, now that I've got another person there, I'm pulling my vehicle up right behind them. Yeah, and lighten it up like a Christmas tree up. and making it very difficult for them to see me. And then why don't you use your intercom? Yeah, you could do that too. Like just get out, light it up, and be like, yo, get out of the car. Yeah. Oh, no. Was that his gun or just the flashlight? I don't know. Shit, I saw that. What was it? It I wasn't. It. He's pick, as soon as he opens that door, the AR is coming out. Like oh, you can see the hilt. Shit. I'll go back. Why didn't? Oh my god! I was watching through the windshield. I wasn't watching the other body cam. So watch the windshield. Oh shit! I don't know if I'm running away though. Well, he had his flashlight it. probably in his gun hand, which is a common oh, problem. Oh, there you um, go. Sure. But, okay, so before we've got any shots fired or anything, I am telling you right now that me being a fully uniformed person, that's not a reasonable response to somebody knocking on my window. But, Tansy, I'll pose this to you. If that cop started opening the door, because I don't know who opened the door. I don't know if it was the guy in the mm -hmm. car or if the cop opened the door. Now what are you thinking? Because if you open my door and the cops just articulated I was sleeping. I mean, what's the rule in Richmond, Virginia? I mean, isn't Virginia like a pretty strict gun law state? I don't know. I don't know. Look. Either way, either way, if it is, like, wouldn't a good argument be like, I was sleeping. You opened my door. I didn't know you were a cop. No one announced they're a cop. Oh, never mind. They can open carry. So... You know what I mean? Hand. Like, there's a mm -hmm. good argument here that. Well, I know. mean, yeah. I mean, I one time I blew a whistle at a dude that was passed out drunk, and he woke up and kicked me, 
And my checking <laughs> officer wanted to charge him with a assault, assault on an LEO. No. And I was like, bro, listen, if if I, if you blow a whistle in my face, I'm waking up kicking right. the shit out of you too. So I was yeah. like, we're not charging this guy with kicking me in the dick. It really fucking hurt, dude. He caught me right in the sack. But you know what? When he kicked me in the sack, I literally said to myself as I was dropping down and back, was like, oh, you fucking retard, Eric. Like, you yeah. knew, you <laughs> yeah. knew that was going to happen. Yeah. You know, and then my buddy beat the brakes off him, which I don't have a, a problem with. But um, but when he wanted to charge the guy, I was like, dude, no. Like, we, yeah. let's be reasonable here. He was passed out drunk. I was being kind of an asshole. I mean, I tried to wake him up. He wouldn't wake up. And I blew my whistle yeah. as loud as I could right in his ear. And he yeah. kicked the so, shit out of me. So I will say, um, if we're going to improve a little police training, stuff that could improve here is use that front windshield. Yeah, but have you ever done that? Have you ever just opened somebody's door? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Why they're I sleeping? Have. But I had reason. Like, had oh, they searched a little harder? Or maybe this guy knew and he didn't say anything. But if I see a gun did, hmm. and my call is you were on top of your car with a gun, oh, yeah, I'm opening that door. Because it's a safety issue. Wait, wait I got to get ahead of the curve. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. If you you've got a call that there's a guy with a gun on top of the you, car, on top of the car, and now he's right. in the car sleeping, and you've walked up on the car, and you can see that he's sleeping. You can't see that big fucking rifle That's through the windshield thing. either. He didn't look through the windshield. He only tried to look through the 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 the. the the tinted window side. That was my issue to begin with was he wasn't, I'm like, why are you not looking through that front windshield? But I have heard zero commands. Yeah. To wake this guy up. I'm not opening your door. If I saw a gun in your lap, I'm not opening your door. Right. I'll pull my gun out and make you open your door or, you know what I mean? But like, that's very yeah. strange. I, I mean, do we know that he opened the door? I doubt he opened. That I, that's door. what I'm saying. I don't know if the cop opened the door or I don't the, think the cop, the would bad do guy. That. So, I don't think the cop would do that. Um, I wouldn't do that. Well, let's keep going. Let's see what it tells us. Put the gun down. 130, Charles. Not like a shot's fired. Shot's fired. Okay, he's pretty far out of the car to not be able to say he didn't know it was a cop now. There's a, par a cop car parked right behind you. Right. So um, let me ask you this, Eric. When you pull your car out behind somebody like that and you know they're in the car, do you not just turn your blue lights on to make it like obvious that they're oh, detained? Oh, for sure. Like if I'm, like I said, I would have lit it up like a Christmas tree. I'm going to make yeah. it as difficult as I can for you to see. Huh, so that's interesting. I can see there being a controversy with this already. Just just for the nature of what, what's happening. But at happening. the same time, like, don't be flagging your AR rifle around right? Um, and jumping on the hood of cars, and we wouldn't have this problem right. anyway. Yeah. So it, I don't really care what the cops yeah. did because you're the fucking idiot that did it. So Yeah, it's not um, reasonable to be getting out of your vehicle with an AR at 5 in the morning. Uh, you know, it, there's just a lot of factors behind it. So from here, separate the weapon, secure the scene. I think you still got one of them. Is she alive? Yeah, yeah. Is she alive? I don't know. She looks like she's still sleeping. Ma'am, are you alive? Oh, 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 oh. oh shit. Oh, fuck. Ma'am, get him, get him, secure her. <laughs> one thirteen truck down. I got one down. I need Razzy to respond to my location. Yeah, can I step away, please? Yeah. What happened? She didn't even know what happened. She just asked, "What happened?" Oh my God. One thirteen. You okay? Yeah. The car doesn't look hit at all. So to me, I'm thinking he didn't fire until that guy was between the door and this fence here. I need supervisor. I need unit team. I need mean, a perimeter. I got one down. What an idiot. Are you okay? Yeah. Like, I get it. It's open carry and you have the right to open carry, but you also have to know that if you're going to get out of your car with a gun in a hostile manner, like, even if that wasn't a cop and that was a robber, he still fucking beat you. Yeah. Okay. So I wish they would have just shown his body cam separately, but they put it in this little mini thing here. So I'm going to guess the cop opened the door because look where his hand is. Whose hand is it? I can't even see. 
That is the bad guy's hand. That's his right hand. The door, the hand that would probably open the door is on top of this rifle. Mm. Yeah, I don't know enough about that case. Yeah, I don't either. I think it would be very bizarre to open somebody's door, though. Um, I it's not. I've done it a lot. I mean, of without times, like you know how I've, loud a metallic tap is from oh, your flashlight sure. on that yeah. glass. Like that's yeah. very loud. And yep. how about this? I'll tell you that maybe I'm wrong, Eric. We can debate it really fast before I have to go to sleep. Would you <laughs> not, like if if I have somebody that's asleep in their car, um, maybe pass out overdose kind of like maybe maybe you're suspecting an overdose, right? Is yeah. that normal to say that you would think that they're overdose? Right. I would yeah. still go back to my car and hit that the air horn. Yeah. Maybe hit the rumbler. Yeah. I would give them tons of opportunity to get up. I've done it multiple times in many different situations. Um, To wake them up, I would be putting all my lights on them before I just go and open somebody's door to their car. Unless I felt like I had exigent circumstances. Yeah. But like just sleeping passed out in your car. The last I know is not, I, I don't know. I'm not personally, I would not do that. No, no. It's again, it's not the way I would have handled it. Um, and, and I take, I, I'm more methodical. It's just my style. Um, to me, if they're sleeping, there's no rush. If I know a gun's involved, I'm like, Hey, I need another set of eyes. Let's start really trying to look around, see what we can see. Because right now the only call that I have is that the guy was on top of a car with a gun, but I don't, I don't have an like, on view offense. This is the, this is the, this is the scene where you, let me see your hands, let me see your hands. Like that's when you get yeah. hyped up and yell because now that's important, not right. the other case. But like this is the case where you give a lot of yelling and a lot of, yeah, that's backwards to me. But I mean, I don't know. Maybe if he opened the door. That's kind of on him. Um, also, somebody said she slept right through it. Drugs. Yeah, yeah. Drugs. I definitely think I definitely think that one or two of them were high um, because that just and and he unasked that vehicle quick. I mean, where he was at, he had to get around his own door. Right. So like, he got out, but I was saying, like, if you want to get out like a warrior, then you need to right. get out like a warrior because even if that wasn't a cop, you're still getting gunned down. <laughs> like, yeah. You're still not yeah. A warrior. So, so I can see this being this is if this is not an issue, this could be an issue. It this happened in at the last day of March. So it's fairly recent. Uh, yeah. Um yeah. This, but this, I mean, like I said at the beginning, I mean, what's the toxicology report gonna show? Like if if it shows that this dude is like blasted, like no, no, they're not gonna make a big media scene out of that because there's your argument right there. It's like the guy was on drugs and he was dancing around on the cars and you know, again, you're sleeping in your car and your car's a 2024 model car. Is this yeah. a rental or, you know, like, I, I mean, it's, it, you're like in hood housing in a 2024 car. Yeah. Like um, you, somebody, we, can, we can tell what kind of people these are. Somebody is asking how he got from the driver's seat to the passenger seat. I think they were in the same seat together. I think they were both in the same seat. Wait, who? What? The 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 female and the male. The, the one that got shot and then the female that was in there was like, what happened? I think they were in the same seat. I think they were snuggling or something. Oh. Because you can clearly see somebody in red is still in the the red. Um, somebody asked, is K9 Enzo still in service? Uh, I think he's fixing to retire, um, but he is fit for duty. That's what I was told. So um, it wasn't that he couldn't go back to duty, but I think he's just at the end of his career. So. Yeah, Batty Betty says uh, that the tapping on the flashlight might work for sober people. Yeah, but I mean, it's still like you you would still try it, right? Like, I mean, it's very yeah. loud. I mean, yeah. I would definitely, before I open a door, I would at minimum knock on the window with my flashlight. Minimum. Yeah. But I mean, I probably would never have been in that situation. To be honest, I'm not Monday morning quarterback. Like, I'm not trying to be like, oh, this is what I would like. I know for a fact I would have had my Q beam or whatever you call it, a spotlight. I would have had my light on them, but I did yeah. that anyway. Didn't matter what, what, like if you were at the library past library hours, you're getting hit with my light. Yeah. Um, light is your friend. If you can't see me, then that's good. So I would have lit it up for sure, but I'm a big fan of blue, blue lights. Um, blue lights, set a tone. They set a mood. It lets everybody know who you are. You don't have to yell and scream who you are 
you know, I'm a big fan of blue lights. I would have put my blue lights on minimal. If I'm detaining somebody in a car, my blue lights are coming on. Yeah. Was rally one of those departments that you just had blue lights? You didn't have red and blues? Yeah, red is for fire, blue is for... Ah, see, in, in, in the great state of Texas, sir, we got cherries and berries, so uh, okay. we have them both. <laughs> yeah, no, if you if you have red, you're, you're EMS of some sort, or medical of some sort. <laughs> Ward said snuggling with an AR. Well, if they're Texan, they definitely might be snuggling. Yeah, I've got AR. no problem. Like, you know, and, and here's the thing. We're an open carry state as well. I have no problem with you open carrying. I see it almost every day in the hood, all sorts of guns, AKs, right. ARs, doesn't matter to me. If I would have saw you, um, even if this call was that you were waving it around and acting crazy and chaotic with a gun, and I showed up on scene and you were sleeping in your car with the gun, again, I would have had all my blue lights on. I would have had the little uh, microphone. I'd been at the back of my car at the B pillar. I would already had my rifle out, aimed at the door, and I would say, driver. Yeah. Put your hands up where I can see them. This is the Raleigh Police Department. I need to see your hands. Yeah. You know, yep. I would have done the whole nine yards. So if I'm going to do a 360 kind of like, you know, back away, bird's eye view of this, I'm going to say there's going to be major issues with this case for the fact that I think, just from what I've seen in the video, it's hard to tell, that the officer opened the door. They never announced. Um... They didn't take the time to get good eyes on through the front windshield because no one announced that there was a gun in there until he fucking freaked out and ran away. So, which I don't blame him for doing, but I three six still nobody said police. Yeah, so like, think, this is great because you had two opposite cases. One we have these guys shouting like "Stop police! Stop yeah. police!" And then we have one that says not nothing. So. Yeah, I think they're they're in for a, a long long trip on this one so yeah, sounds, i don't like to see it i don't like to see it i don't like to see it either because i think they were out there trying to do good police work yeah they just uh, you know and maybe maybe his articulation is that he thought homeboy um was overdosed and he was trying to get to him to make sure he wasn't overdosed i mean yeah. you're shining your light in his face i mean i don't yeah. know I, you know we don't know the whole story I don't. I don't i don't right now i'd be like i didn't see a rise and fall in his chest I thought he wasn't breathing. You know, like, <laughs> right. I was concerned for his health. He was dying. Like, oh my God. I was like, yeah. Oh, this guy's dying. I opened the door as quickly as I could. And you know, yeah. because, I mean, honestly though, in, in reality, like this fentanyl overdose is like very similar to this. And you know, when they, they pass out on the side of the road or whatever, cause the fentanyl kicks in. So, you yeah. know, I mean, maybe you could articulate that honestly. Yeah. So, well, buddy, uh, I'm going to do a couple more videos, but I know okay. you got to go. So um, I do. I have to be in, in Maryland tomorrow. So but we have a yeah. case breakdown at 11. Um, if you're around at 11 in the morning, uh, I well, would be, be like sleeping. Yeah. I'll be sleeping. Yeah. yeah. You're more Sorry. than welcome to join us. But, uh, I, uh, I appreciate it. But yeah, I, I got to work at uh, about 9 p.m. tomorrow until 6 a.m. So cool. I'll be sleeping. Well, hey, I had a lot of fun. Thank you for inviting me. I had hey, a great time. Tell everybody how they can find you, where to find you at. Um, a failure to stop podcast. Uh, and that that's probably it. And uh, yeah, I've had probably more rum tonight than I've had since like Christmas. So okay. if I was slurry tonight, I apologize. You're the man. Appreciate it. Everybody from failure to podcast. Uh, you're more than welcome. <laughs> I'm glad you heard that. Uh, anybody else from... <laughs> <laughs> I can't Don't wait to, to do jujitsu with you. I just oh, can't wait. I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> God, uh, you guys are more than welcome to stick around. I'm gonna keep going over some videos, but I'm gonna be by myself uh, unless somebody else jumps on. So, uh, I'll see Eric, you later, thank you, buddy. Take it easy. Have a safe trip. All right, let's go to the next video here. Uh, yeah, I typically go for about two hours, and um, that is how I like to roll with this stuff. But, uh, okay, we're switching, um, what do you call it? Share this tab. We are switching, uh, we went from police activity to body cam, uh, police body cam videos. So shout out to police body cam videos because we're using theirs. So uh, I have to give them credit because I don't want them to get me shut down. So, all right. Again, don't know what this video is going to be. We're going to watch it together. It's only three minutes and 57 seconds. So let's go. Warren police released body camera video showing an armed man running out of a garage and pulling out a 9mm Glock pistol, pointing it at officers before they opened fire. 
the suspect was believed to be suffering from a mental health crisis. Investigators say he had no previous criminal record other than a few traffic stops and had bought his gun legally from a private individual. Okay. Oh, All right. So on these mental health crisis videos and stuff like that, when you're dealing with somebody like that, your level of um, alertness is higher. So as I'm dealing with this, I'm not going to stand in front of this door and I'm going to, I'm probably going to have my hand on my gun, but I'm not going to be hyper vigilant yet because I don't have a reason to be. Um, so let's see what it goes. Okay, we hear some yelling. I'm going to be announcing myself. Hey, police, hey, come out and talk to me because I don't want to go inside. I want to get them outside from their house. That's just the way I like to do this. Oh, shit. <laughs> he apparently saw a gun that we didn't see, said, oh, shit, and unasked himself from the area. So if I see a gun and I'm trying to get the hell out of Dodge, yeah, I'm going to be cutting angles and getting behind something. Yeah, guys, you can't go by those numbers. I get a uh, uh, real quick. Somebody said there's nine likes and 14 people watching. Don't go by those numbers. They're not accurate. That's just just what the, the analytics show you at the time. Last time we did this, when the final analytics came in, we had like 34,000 people that watched. Okay, so you see them, they're fleeing. Oh, he comes out hot. He's limping. He's got the gun in his hand. There's no more games now. You're chasing me with a gun. So as soon as I'm able to get a shot, I'm shooting. He doesn't even know why he's running. He just got a gun. Oh, and he's aiming it. Yeah. Crossfire. So this is part of the scary parts about when you're in a neighborhood is everything is a backdrop that you don't want to shoot into. But if you're pointing a gun at me, there's backdrop is no longer a concern. I'm still going to defend myself. That's just my mindset. Shots fired. Shots fired. Give me Gun on the ground. Ambulance. I concur. Do not move. move. Cover him. I'm going hands on. Fire. All right. So from here, you got to pat him down still. So you're going to secure him, put him in cuffs, check him, make sure he doesn't have any other weapons on him. And then you go into the life-saving mode. This is what I like to call suicide by cop. Hands. 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 No. <laughs> That, that moan you heard right there, that is the lights are going out. That's what that sound is. That's a different, you heard how high pitched he was. That was the adrenaline and what he had energy to do at the time before the blood loss started to hit. And then that, oh, that is a, that's what we call a death rattle. Cuffs, get him cuffed up. Somebody give me a first aid kit. Give me ambulance on the way. If I were to guess, I'm no medical expert, but he has bled out here. <laughs> Internally, he's oh, officer, tell dispatch, tell dispatch, officers are good. Nobody's hit. No, that wasn't a woman screaming in the background. That was that was this guy. So we need to clear the house, guys. Call, tell dispatch, we need to clear the house. All right, good on him because we don't know if we've got more than one. Um, and you need to make sure that this person hasn't hurt somebody else inside the house. Uh, I wasn't even my mind wasn't even there yet. So this guy really is ahead of the game. Just curious if we have another angle. I'm already covered in his blood. No, nope, doesn't look like it. Okay, so uh, we will smally size that real quick. So yeah, so when you're dealing with the CIT stuff, it is crazy. And you know, for the people that want to have civilian crisis intervention, people going like. Are you going to send a civilian into something like that? But yeah, Guns and Cafe nailed it. DRT, uh, if you're not in the 
law enforcement or first responder world or military, that stands for dead right there. Like he, I don't see that guy making it. Um, I could be wrong. I'm not a doctor and I never pronounce people dead at the scene, no matter how long they've been there. Um, so these, these mental crisis things like this is, that was a suicide by cop. That guy completely gave those officers no option. In, in my opinion, there was no, I mean, you're chasing after, and the, the officer that ended up shooting him, he didn't even know what he's getting into. He just said, where's he at? I just got here. What's going on? And then here he comes. They're like, he's got a gun. So he drew his gun out and he's waiting. He's like, where is he at? Where is he at? Where is he at? And the guy comes around the corner pointing a gun at him. Imagine being that officer. You just unasked your car just to come help out. And you're the one that has to engage with your weapon. You weren't even at the house first. So, um, and, and, I don't blame those officers one bit that could turn around and cut tail as quick as they could because you have to cut angles. You got to get get out of the way. And if you're behind the curve, they were behind the curve. They didn't have their weapons out. It's really all you can do. Um, and I don't even know if he fired. I don't know if the bad guy there fired. So uh, next video is three minutes and 20 seconds long. So another shorty. Uh, let's share this one. And keep going. And guys, feel free in the comments. If you got thoughts, opinions, whatever, feel free to share those. 7.15 p.m. An officer from the Proactive Roads Policing Team requested the driver of a white Range Rover Evoke to stop. The driver failed to stop and a pursuit commenced through Parkgate Rotherham. After running from the scene, the officer focused his efforts on catching one of the two suspects. Running after the suspect, a member of the public who had witnessed the incident offered the officer his bicycle. The officer was quickly on the bike and cycling after the man. Excess excess, I've got a vehicle failing to stop. I'm Dalton Lane, Dalton Lane. It's Julie. Excess India, this is a strange pursuit. It's actually in reverse up Dalton Lane. And he's still in reverse on the wrong side of the road. It's temporarily high risk, back down to medium as we enter the nationals in reverse. I'm sorry, this is the cutest pursuit call out I've ever heard. These London guys are great. And it's now onto Kresik Road. It's a right, 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 Kresik Road. Kresik Road still approaching the junction with Dalton Lane. It's a left, left, left. What does that mean? A left, left, left. It's a left, left, left. No east, west, north, south. Now guess. Dalton Lane towards Doncaster Road. Speed is six zero in a three zero. Going over the River Don. Speed is seven zero in a three zero. Pedestrians are light. Traffic's light. It's medium risk. I love this call out. This is the best. Got some ground on me, and it looks like it's going to be a decamp, decamp, and a crash, crash, crash out and running. <laughs> the, the, the triple reminders, I'm loving it. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do exactly. I'm sorry, I lost track of what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, yes, I'm going to, if the guy bails out of the vehicle, if I can continue to follow in my car, I'm going to do so. Because I'm not going to start running until I absolutely have to. Let him burn their energy out. <laughs> All right. I'm making a prediction. You guys know I haven't seen this video. Is the word bloody going to come out? Get on the bloody ground. That's basically like them dropping the F-bomb over there. So um, let's see. Where's he gone? Where's he gone? That's it. <laughs> oh, he's getting the bike. Oops. Cheers. <laughs> this is the best. He gives his cheers. I love it. He commandeered a bike. Stay where you are. Oh, he's got him on tight. He knows how to shift. Now, I'm a cyclist, so I'm, I'm digging this even Police more. Police officer with a taser! Stand still! Bust through that gate. Stay oh. still now! Stay still! 
if I catch up to you, you're getting tased. In this instance, I'm tasing you. Um, as long as I don't see a weapon. Uh, and I would have Kool-Aid man that gate. I wasn't I wouldn't have been polite and opened it. Careful. Careful. You don't know what you're standing on. Jump it. Jump it. Yeah, buddy. Stay still. Get your hands where I can see him. Now! Yeah. Do not move! Get on the floor now! Get on the what now? What did he? Did anybody else hear that? Oh, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but every night at 9 o'clock on a military installation, they play taps, just so you know. Taps are playing right now. I'm going to go back because I really want to know what that word was that he just said for him to get on. It was not ground. Floor now! Floor. On the floor! Floor. Kraus called it. Thank Stand you, Stand by. I've got one on the floor. <laughs> at this time, under arrest. Suspicion of theft of that vehicle. You don't have to say anything. Now I'm your defense. If you do not mention when questioned, some of you later relying in court. Just like the movies, guys. He's already reading them his rights as he's putting the cuffs on. That is not how American policing goes, by the way. You don't start reading your rights as that's TV shit. I like it. Oh, anything you do, say, maybe giving evidence. This That was the cutest pursuit I have ever seen in my life. That was amazing. I loved it. <laughs> Somebody said, how can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? <laughs> oh, my God. That was wonderful. Uh, is he going to offer him some tea as well? Yeah, that may have been part of the questioning. Hey, you know, you have the right to remain silent. Anything think say, can will be used against you. Um, at this time, would you like some tea? Uh, <laughs> I like it. Get on the, get on the floor. All right, I have one video left. It's 13 minutes, so um, I won't necessarily go all 13 minutes if the video sh starts showing shit we've already seen. Um, so, but this one is off of Code Blue, and let's go here. Ba, 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 ba. Again, I've never seen these videos. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh <laughs> what do you say? What Bosco say? My man was all cheers. Hello there, Gavna. <laughs> you like that accent? All right, let's go. 2023. Police were called to an apartment. By the way, nobody does their videos better when it comes to like the pre stuff and then making snarky comments than these guys uh, that we got this video from here. Building in response to a will assault complaint in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Based on both the victim's testimony and video footage, the woman was delivering meals at an apartment building when 37-year-old Bradley Quimbley initially passed by her, but then abruptly changed course and followed her into an elevator. He proceeded to make comments about her appearance and suggested they date, despite never having met her before, after Bradley suggested they have intimate activities in the elevator, she immediately declined. He then grabbed her and engaged in sexual contact. When the elevator doors opened, he blocked her exit, but she explained she had to deliver the meals. Eventually, she managed to escape, but was visibly distraught by the incident. Several days later, dispatch received another call from the same apartment building reporting Bradley's return as he was seen kicking at the lobby door. Upon locating him, the officer immediately recognized him and heard him repeatedly demanding for exclusive intimate services. However, are you facing injury and feeling lost? Look no further than today's sponsor, Morgan & Morgan. <laughs> Morgan & weird... Morgan is the largest personal injury law firm with an below. What a weird ad spot. That's the first time I've ever seen them do that. Bradley, what? What are you? Bradley, what are you doing? All right. So, knowing the nature of this call, my threat level is going to be elevated, but I'm still going to try. As long as I can see his hands, I'm going to try to open up dialogue. Um, I said, who uploaded this video? Uh, this one is by Police Body Cam. So just based on his ramblings, I'm already going to go with he's a nut job. Um, so you've got that stuff to deal with. 
but that doesn't mean my threat level is going to go down anymore. It's actually going to probably go up a little higher because they're unpredictable. 94, he's extremely escalated outside Stoffel Court now. It is funny when they do know their names. Bradley, can I talk to you? Well, I don't want to do that, but I'd like to talk to you. Bradley. What are you doing? What? All right. The, the turn and the aggressive approach, knowing that his hands are clear, I'm probably going to switch to taser and just see if that will work, depending on, like, I will make my line in the sand, let's say that yellow, double yellow line. Um, and I'm probably going to use the car as a barrier. I'm, uh, this, this silver car here to the left, if it were me, uh, I'm going to just sidestep until that car is between him and I and then try to deploy my taser if he keeps coming forward. What are you doing, Bradley? Bradley! You don't come by me, you dumb. Come by me, you dumb. You ain't gonna do. Come by me with that bull. I swear to God, I'm gonna beat your world. This my world, y'all world. This Brian world, you dumb. Come, come suck my. Ninety-four. He's out in traffic now. Yeah, you gotta worry about cars coming through. Obviously, as with camera just turned, there's a car coming through right now. Bradley, Yo. stay away from that car. Yeah, come suck my. Stay away from that car, Bradley. You come suck my. Come oh. Now you got the car. Him. Nah, you Get got, on the ground. Nah, I'm not playing. That was definitely a line of saying you're I can't take the chance of another car coming by and you doing that. I'm at least trying to tase you right then and there. Man, you get on the ground. On the ground. Bradley, get on the ground now. Taser, taser, taser. Taser get effective. 94 foot pursuit. We're headed eastbound on Cass Street from 7th. Taser was ineffective. Very clear, ground. very get clear call ground. out. Another taser was deployed and seemed to be effective, immediately dropping his ass. That's why I like Code Blue Cam. <laughs> you got the ground. Taser, taser, taser. Beautiful execution. Now, what people don't understand about the taser is you see how they went hands on while he was still locked up? It's not going to bite you. The taser is not going to go through his skin and get you. The only thing that will get you is you can see those, those strings hanging out right there. If you touch both those strings at the same time, then it'll bite you. But it's designed so you can grab their arms, put them behind their back while they're locked up. That's the beauty of it. What cops fail to do a lot of times is they let that guy fall down and they let the taser cycle for five seconds because that's what it's designed to do. It cuts off after five seconds. Um, if you want to use it again, you got to pull the trigger again. Um, so now they, you immediately recover from a taser. Once it's done, you're fully back to, to you. So these officers did a great job of getting on him as soon as he went down to the ground. I like that. That that's actually more rare than it should be. If you move, you're going to get tased again. Oh, oh damn ads. Although, I will say, this one ad always makes me want to play this game. 43 second taser deployment. Come on, man. Brad, knock it off, Brad. You're going to get tased again. Brad, knock it off. Beautiful. So, what we typically do is we'll cross the ankles and then force the legs back to their butt. Because it's really hard to kick at anybody when you're... See how his body weights up against his feet like that? It's really hard to kick from there. Um, so that's a good job. You, you only do that until they get cuffed up. So right now they're trying to get them cuffed. Before you will take medical. What you doing, man? Knock it off. Injured at all? No. Thank you, boy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 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 I think they're giving him another round of the taser because he keeps fighting. Bradley, those probes are still on you. We can tase you whenever we want if you're uh, resisting. Okay. So make sure you're cooperative with us. Bradley, listen to me. Are you injured? Keep your feet up, Brad. You Thank you. Bradley, would you like to sit on the curb? Can you talk to me, Bradley? What? Yeah, man. Let me sit up. Beautiful. So, that's the end of that one. Um, and that's all the videos I got. So, I'll discuss that one a little bit. Um, this is obviously a mental health crisis issue. 
do I think that this dude is necessarily a bad guy? No. Um, do I think the cops have dealt with him a lot? Do I think that that is the sexual talk that this guy was probably doing? Do I think he's a danger? For sure. Definitely. He's volatile. You can't have that out in the public. So um, he definitely needed to go to jail, but he definitely needs to be on medications. Um, and a lot of times the frequent flyers you get with, they're good anytime they're on their medication. And then as soon as they fall off of that, um, cause a lot of times they think they're cured. Like, well, I haven't, I haven't had an episode in forever. It's cause you've been on your medication. The minute they stop, this is the results of that stuff. So, um, let me see here. Uh, the taser seven hurts like a mofo 10 out of 10 don't recommend <laughs> I, I don't blame you um i'm currently on the taser 10 so um that is the the latest and greatest that we are on not everybody's got that uh ability to say that but my department's got some good money and they they give us really good equipment so i'm very happy for that the taser 10 can shoot 10 cartridges by the way and it shoots up to 45 feet versus the old 25 um what do you say here? Bosco said, just seeing them go stiff and then bam, face plant. Yeah, that's that's how you know it's working. <laughs> but the failure <coughs> the failure rate on a taser is higher than people expect. And it's not because the taser itself isn't working. It's because you just didn't get a good connection. You didn't the probe spread wasn't wide enough. There's a whole bunch of factors. Um, but the taser is definitely overestimated in just how effective it is. It's in my opinion, I think it's 100% effective as long as it's it hits with a wide enough spread and it also um, connects all the way. But if it doesn't do that, then you're not going to get the best results. So uh, let's let's see. From how they talk to him, seems like a small town policing less than 100,000. Yeah, I would agree. Um, although it, that's how I talk to people, honestly. I'm not... <sighs> I just don't, I don't get worked up anymore. Um, if I get worked up, then you know, it's, it's bad, bad, bad. Um, and I think that just obviously that just comes with experience, but I think this officer, it could be a very populated place. It's just, the officer has a lot of experience and obviously he knows this guy. So that may have helped too. It's, it's when you don't know somebody that we tend to be a lot more elevated. So is what it is, but man, uh, for all of our Failure to Stop podcast fans that jumped on, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, for the Two Cops, One Donut people, uh, definitely always glad to see you guys. Thanks for coming back. Steve Wallace, always always give him a shout out because I don't think he's ever missed a live. I've been doing this you know, for three years now, and any live that I've done, Steve Wallace has made sure to wave and say hello on every single one. Um, so shout out to him. And... Guys, you can find me at, uh, you can go to my website, twocopsonedonut.com. Um, the best way to help support me is I, I, I'm just a cop. Like I don't, I'm not trying to come out and take money by any means, but it does take money now that we've got this thing established to keep it going. So the way you guys can help me is not through money, but just share, like, follow, you know, subscribe on our YouTube channel if you can. Um, and that's the best way to help us out. Uh, I won't sit here and beg like a 16-year-old girl. Like, I need you to like me, please. If you don't like me, then you're against me. No, I'm not doing that. And let people know what we're doing. If you guys are into what we're doing, cool. If not, like, you know, Tansy stuff's good. I'm a, I'm a big believer that there's, a, there's 4 million podcasts out there. Somebody's doing it, right? You know, Tansy's got a crim, uh, criminal. Tansy's got a police-based podcast. Izzo. There's not a lot of police-based podcasts out there. So one of those guys is doing it right. The Suffering Podcast. I want to give them a shout-out. Gold, Badge, uh, Gold Badges Podcast is another go to Anti-Hero Podcast. Check those guys out. They're doing great. Um, I'm just trying to think of some other police podcasts off the top of my head. That's all I can think of off the top of my head. Um, but all great, great stuff. And uh, I think this is a different way for people to interact and kind of my mission. My mission is to bridge that gap between the citizens and other first responders and stuff and have just the conversations. Like, why did he tase him? Why didn't you shoot him in the leg? You know, let's have those talks. Let's watch these videos, kind of get you in the mindset of what we're doing. And this is just one facet of what I do. I also interview criminals. I also interview um, wrongly convicted. I also interview anybody basically related to the criminal justice system. We talk about three things, humanize, 
educate and perspective. That's it. I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not a controversial guy. Um, one, because I am still a cop and I can get fired. I ain't trying to get fired. So, uh, I love being a cop. I absolutely love it. I think you can still do real police work out there too. You just police works nothing but finding out what the rules are and adapting, figuring out what you need to do to think outside the box to keep catching criminals. And the next, when you get cut off at one end, it's time to think outside the box again and figure out a new way to do it. Everybody thought when body cams came out that that was the end of police work. It's not going to be able to do it anymore. Shit. I, I feel naked if I leave my, my office without my body cam. I love them. So I think that's, that's basically what we're trying to do out here. Um, obviously I'm a little different than what some other guys are. I'm trying to share y'all's comments, but they're not popping up all of a sudden. There we go. Um, Bosco Autry, I have a music and automotive history podcast. Hell yeah. Put the name out there, bro. I'm all about sharing the love. Put it out there. Um, for some reason, Dave, oh, there we go. Sergeant Levine, get in touch with Angry Cops. Oh, that's a good one. I haven't heard of Angry Cops. Angry Cops, a.k.a. Rich High. Have him come on and break down vids. Oh, I'm in. I have connections. You want to network to me? I'm in. I love having other cops on here and, and hearing their perspectives. I think it's great. So uh, definitely have them reach out to me. Uh, you guys can find me at, if you want them to find me and to reach me, uh, I'm going to put it in the chat. Two cops, one donut, all spelled out at Yahoo. Don't make fun of me for it being Yahoo. I just wanted it to be different. Everybody's Gmail. So I wanted somebody to remember like, yeah, it's weird. He's got a Yahoo email address. Nobody has that. So I put it in the chat, but two cops, one donut, all spelled out. And donut is D-O-N-U-T, not the traditional way, D-O-U-G-H. So um, I will be taking this podcast and putting it on our audio podcast only as well. So be sure to listen out for that. And um what do you say here? Uh, Bosco said, and going live on the 27th and 28th on YouTube. Hell yeah, bro. Um, I am done with my military orders on the 28th, so I will be back and things will be back to normal. As you can see, I had internet connections earlier. It's a pain in the ass out here. So I, I haven't been doing my real podcast since I've been here. So I've got basically a month of downtime where I wasn't able to do my real podcast. So I apologize for that, but it is what it is. I'm, I'm here I don't even want to say serving our country, guys, because I'm just on the base, you know, at gate shacks, like saluting people as they come through, checking their IDs. I'm not doing anything fancy, um, but um, I'm doing what I can while I'm here. And I appreciate everybody. Thank you for coming out. Shout out to my sponsors, Peregrine and Ghost Patch. Check those guys out and everybody else. Have a good night.